right? So the agenda for uh, today, it is uh, global standards, OAS top 10 and other classifications. We're going to have some light on uh, web technologies, HTTP methods, error codes, cookie basics. We're going to have some website account Kung Fu. Uh, open source and commercial tools discussion, deep dive with Bob Shoot and pen testing a CMS, right? So starting it off with the uh, web standards. Web standards are defined as a set of standards and technical spe specifications that is used to define aspects of the world wide web, right? So generally we see a very normal keyword that is www, right? W3C consortium we call it. So there was a person called Tim Berners-Lee who invented a tool called Enquire, right? So where and when he did this discovery, he discovered this tool in 1989 at a uh, research lab which is known as CERN that is used for nuclear research. The European Particle Physics Laboratory. Right. Later on, this become the worldwide web as we know it today. And having it's written the specification for HTTP and HTML, he founded the Worldwide Consortium in short in 1994. Right. So since 1994, we have more than 100 such standards called as W3C Consortium. Right. So it's a part of it and we follow certain standard when it comes to web. Right. Like most of the reference W3C standard you can see, we have HTML, we have CSS, we have XML, right? And uh, you can see web standard and your content management system, CMS generally we call it. So by CMS, I'm talking about those uh, softwares which you must have came across like uh, WordPress, Drupal is there, Zoomla is there, right? Magento is there, a couple of more CMS are there in the market, right? So if we talk about the first point which is written on the slides, that is uh, HTML, right? Today, the version it is coming out to be HTML5, right? But when we talk about HTML, so HTML is a publishing language of the WWW developed by Tim Berners-Lee, right? Then HTML2. Zero came into the picture in 1994. So that is like it came with a cross platform functionality, right? 2.0. HTML 3.0 come with the richer versions. HTML 4 extends the mechanism for style sheets, scripting, frames, and embedding the objects, right? And today we see HTML file 5. So there is uh, much difference. All the previous tags are included along with you can play with audio tags and video tags as well, right? So previously Flash was also there in the picture. Now it comes along with HTML5. We can embed it to anywhere we want, okay? So there are a couple of uh, things that is there in web application security when we talk about. So the first thing that is the very common thing that we generally see is OAS Top 10 2017. Right, and the another classifications apart from OAS top 10 that we have, right? I'm holding the slides for a minute. Just have a look on this picture, mm -hmm. all right? So as you can see, like you see on the left-hand side, you have OAS top 10, 2013. Mm -hmm. There are 10 attacks. And we have OASP top 10, 2017, and we have 10 attacks, right? Now, what is this OASP? If we uh, see the abbreviation or what does it stands out, it will be Open Web Application Security Project, right? So OASP is nothing. OASP is a community, right? So it is the community, online community, which has been formed in 2003, right? So what they did in 2003, they made an application out to the public and it is vulnerable, right? So a couple of people, thousand lakhs of people, millions of people, they attacked on that particular application and they start categorizing the attacks, right? So since 2003, couple of revisions for OAS top 10 attacks for web application, it's there in the market, right? So 2003, it was the first one. 
then we have the next second release in 2006 then the third in 2007 then 2010 then 2013 and now 2017 2020 it is not there only the latest version it is 2017 right but in the industry when you go out as you can see that A4 and A7 is merged into A5, right? That means two attacks merge into one attack and A4, A8 and A10 that has been introduced new to it. Again, if you compare to it, cross-site scripting has came little bit down to the lower side from A3 to A7, right? Now, we have OWASP top 10 for web application, OWASP top 10 for mobile security is different, OWASP top 10 for IoT security it is different, OWASP top 10 for API, web application API it is different. This is just for your web application that we're going to study, right? We're going to come back again on this slide and we're going to study each and every attack in depth, right? But before that, we should know the basics of HTTP requests and status codes, error codes, and cookies, right? So we'll come back to this slide again, and we'll go ahead with some practical implementations and in depth, right? Uh, no, Mr. Barun, it is uh, nothing related to the, like A1 is the highest one. We generally see the rank because injections are always on the tops, like it's in, high priority and we have to fix it and the first thing every pen test will look for is injection. There are a couple of ways to do injection, right? So I'll explain you in brief how this has been done. It is all being done on uh, uh, like number of attacks that has been done throughout the globe, right? So we're going to study, we're going to come back on that slide again. So we're going to start with HTTP status codes, right? Very common thing that we generally see up in the browsers when when we say like we you are browsing a link and you say it cannot be reached 500 internal server error 404 page not found these kind of stuff right so HTTP method defines a set of requests to indicate the desired action that is performed for a given resource. They can also be nouns. These request methods are sometimes referred to as HTTP verbs, right? So as you can see, we have five points over here, starting with like one, right? So one XX means it can be 100, it can be 101, right? So one zero zero or any notation that starts with one means informational. This means the request has been received and the process is continuing. For example, we have a status code called one zero zero hundred, right? Continue only part of the request will be received by the server, but as long as it has not been rejected, the client would be continue with the request, right? So it is used for receiving and the processing that is going on with the server, client and the server, right? So 100 status code you will see there. When it is 101, that means it is used for switching protocol. Switching protocol means the server switches the protocol. For example, you switch, you, you have a redirection from HTTP to HTTPS, right? So at the server end, you can have a configuration like this that you can redirect your entire traffic to any other domain or you can redirect to any other protocol also if you want. This is possible. I'll showcase you certain uh, server configuration regarding this, right? Then, uh, we're going to talk about 2xx, so it can be anything like 200 OK, generally we see 201, 202, these kind of status codes, right? 200 means, 200 OK means status, right? It is response OK, everything is OK. So it means success. It means the action was successfully received, understood and accepted. That means whatever we are sending to the server, he is accepting. He is understanding and he is giving you a response back to you. In that case, in the HTTP header, the status will be coming out to be 200 OK. All right. 201. Created the request is complete and a new resource is created. For example, 
200 means like request is created and a new resource is created so let's suppose at the instance at the server instance you are accessing one of the objects one of the applications and you say you are uh, you are a new user you authenticate you go 201 will be there in the response if there is a new instance starting at the server end right then you have 202 status code which says accepted right that is the request is accepted for processing but the processing is not complete you have accepted for processing but the processing has not yet complete due to some other reason right in that case you will receive 202 status code okay then we have 3xx it is written so redirection right generally you see when you go to any website someone share you a link you go and it is written moved permanently right that is because of we have a status code called 301 right sometime it is written 302 found right the requested page has moved temporarily to a new url so for example might be you are doing a migration of the website and you forget to change the path the entire path of that particular website right so when you visit you see the page is not there but it says that it has been found but the it has been moved permanently to a new url right so 3xx means the redirection it means the further action must be taken in order to complete the request so if you don't find the page you will look for the correct scenario and then you will look for it right then you have 4xx it's called like client error right it means the request contain incorrect syntax or cannot be fulfilled so for example this is generally happen like when you have a link let's suppose you have a link called infosectrain.com slash you write security workshop nothing will come over that page or it says like uh, if 404 is there if it, it will say page not found right or let's suppose you go to any particular image directory you go to any picture directory you write infosectrain.com slash pictures if picture the permission the permission of that folder is there it will give you forbidden access that means 403 forbidden access it is forbidden that the requested pair cannot be seen right 401 is unauthorized the requested page need a username and a password this can also be done when you go to the server you can apply a username and password to a particular directory if you are trying to access that particular directory from the outside world it will ask you for authentication right so in that case 401 unauthorized status code will come in the response okay then we gonna have 500 we call it like 5xx server error this is like all the errors that will be coming from the server end it means the server failed to fulfill an apparently valid request for example we see 500 internal server error right the request is not completed and the server met an unexpected condition right then we have 502 bad gateway the requested the request is not complete the server receive an invalid response that is why 502 bad gateway comes and generally this kind of 502 bad gateway comes when you are doing certain kind of payment gateway things so you you go to the payment gateway page and they say you do not close or do not refresh the browser why they say because until the request is completed your transaction should be successfully completed and it will return back it successfully to you right so 502 bad gateway should not be there otherwise it will say the payment or the transaction has not completed successfully right the request was not completed you requested to the bank server you gave an otp otp incorrect three time four time after that it cannot be done right it will say transaction failed in that case right 503 error is also there 503 is for service unavailable so possibility this is there like let's suppose people are doing DOS on the web application and you are trying to access that particular link or an IP 
in that case it will say you service unavailable so your browser keeps on loading it will take a load and after some time it will throw you an error that it is 503 service unavailable sometime it happens when the bank server or any other big servers are going for uh, maintenance mode right so in that case these kind of error you will see right so just for a quick uh, revision i would say we studied error code 100 101 also 101 means continue that the request will be received by the server as long as it cannot be rejected right 101 is the switching protocol so the server will switch the protocol right 202 201 and 200 that is status okay the request is complete and 202 means it is accepted the request is accepted for processing right then we going to have like uh, 301 302 301 was moved permanently right and 302 is found the requested page moved temporary to a new url redirection it was moved right during migration it is moved client error you see 402 401 unauthorized payment required 403 is forbidden access right and 404 is page not found cool then we're going to have like 500 errors so it will be 500 internal server error so why this error comes because the request is not completed the server met an unexpected condition maybe query problem maybe database problem any kind of problem right 502 bad gateway so this kind of stuff happens when you are doing a transaction they say you stay on the page let the request complete otherwise it's it's going to be a fail error on your screen right then you have 503 service unavailable this happens in the case of dos right uh there are a couple of questions let me just quickly answer them avast obtain are classified based on priority like a1 is high a10 is low uh not really you can say the number of people who have tried out this it is based upon that right so you will see injection is the most common like which is everybody is trying around the globe so it is tried like this it's not we like you can say information disclosure sometime information disclosures become to an high level as well it doesn't go medium right so it it's not be classify on the basis of priority i would say why was top 10 is so popular and other vulnerabilities like sans vulnerable are not so popular it's it's uh, you can say like most of the tools are oas top 10 compliant even if you talk about microsoft azure cloud printest or any other body or any other organization oas top 10 is a uh, popular open source things right and you talk about there are multiple things when i come to that side i will talk to you on that right okay uh Mr. Apas, you have is the code applicable for both HTTP and HTTPS? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is there. It is there. It is a part of HTTP header, right? HTTP status code. So HTTPS means you will be supporting HTTP for sure, right? Where where can we see one zero one code? In the response, in the response header, Mr. Vijay, you can see it's a switching protocol, right? The server switches the protocol. so sometime what happen when you are trying to have ssl installations so you have to make a redirection at the server end when you make a redirection when you see the response it will come as 101 in the request for sure all right i will open up the chat window again in some time let's going to continue with the session right so this is actually what i was talking about over there so this is the actual http request and response header the http request is made by the client and the http response sent by the server have some overhead data that provide administrative information to the client and the server right as you can see up this picture this is saying me that it's a get request http 1.1 version right host is bing.com user agent it is written mozilla 5.0 linux i686 means it's 32 bit en us means it's an english version right you can see we have uh, ubuntu it is written right 
so that means i get to know some information about the target as well right then you have accept text by html this is the format which is written over here then you have accepted language then you have certain encoding gzip and deflate these are some of the compressions right of http these are some of the compressions then you have accepted caset we have iso 8859 utf8 encoding over here keep alive for this seconds right 300 seconds it will be keeping alive the sessions then you have cookie and cookie have certain things over here you can see muid it can be a user id as well then you have something no form and something written search user equal to auto redirect something it is written right so we going to go deep dive into this header and we going to see like what does it mean right so this header contains some critical information which an attacker can use against a web application for example host you can do the injections of the query over here that will become host header injection right you can do an cross site scripting over here because if we need an input right we need to bypass the input we need an input to inject out something right so we going to see that as well so this is the part like we going to talk about host we going to talk about user agent and cookie over here so this field is in the header and it is used to identify individual website by a host name if they are sharing the same ip okay so like bing.com it was there in the header the client web browser also sets up a user agent string to identify the type and version of the browser so you can see again i am bringing back to the slide you can see bing.com is there and it is also being added mozilla 5.0 linux and all the stuff right so we can see it is running linux mozilla 5.0 version then you have ubuntu so we going to know some information regarding the target that okay it is having these kind of stuff with us okay then we have user agent it is written the field is set correctly to the default values by the web browser but it can be spoofed by the user end possibility is there you can change the user end as well right so this is usually done by a malicious user to retrieve contents designed for other type of web browser okay then we going to have cookie over here so cookie is nothing it's a temporary value shared between the client and the server for session management right we going to go deep dive into cookie as well don't worry about it so right now again on the screen you can see it has like muid right it has a uh, searched af and no form and something written over there so this is the structure right of a simple cookie this is the structure okay let's go ahead we're going to see there is a refer right refer and accepted encoding so you can see this is another important field that would often see when you redirected from one url to the another so for example you visit one page right you click on forward in the bob sort you going to see this refer this in the header you going to see this so when you are keep on jumping having a redirection couple of redirection on that page you going to see this http refer right so this field contain the address of the previous page from which the link is link to the current page was followed so you are having a back link and the forward link right you can understand like this so you have an old link and then you have a new link as well with you okay so the attackers manipulate the referral field using the xss attack and redirect the user to a malicious site not even xss you can have any kind of redirections from there right so let's suppose you host something or you can inject something maybe a parameter maybe a query into the referral field and the same will be reflected on the next link which you gonna click on that okay then we have some accepted encoding which i was saying about like this is generally used for compression scheme supported by the client right because see the data that is going between you application server and the main server right so it has to be compressed so that it will be fast if it is be very heavy very large then it's going to take so much time right so we use these kind of compression which are like known as gzip and deflate these are the most common ones okay 
this was about http request header this is the request one right now we're going to talk about about the response that what is server is giving to us okay so as you can see now again you can see the picture it is coming out to be http slash 1.1 that's the version right then you have 200 okay right response that means response request has been made response has been 100 percent okay everything is processed perfectly that is written 200 okay so the status code everything will come over here only all right and we have a cache control that is like private max age is like zero over here written content type text by html you can change it to text by jpeg also no problem at all you can change it to anything text by xml it will start giving you content type xml as well right then you have very that is coming out to be accepted encoding that is the same gzip and deflate server this is good because it is a response header so you are going to see the server right server is 8.5 cool then we're gonna have a set cookie over here as you can see this is coming out to be the session id which is written set id set cookie right sid it is written something then domain is equal to bing.com and path is coming from the main root folder you can see the main home folder or public html folder right then we're gonna have uh, something called date and the content length in bytes over here 57288 is the bytes of data that you are having from the server right again we're gonna study in detail this is like a uh, status code the first thing which is over there then you have a set cookie right so this field is defined with contain a random value that is used by the server to identify the client and store the temporary data so you can see like after a particular point of time the cookies will be vanishing off okay it will be deleting from your end as well because the server is using just for having a random value just for the transfer and after that work has been done and it ha it will be finished after that it will be vanished right then we have server and we have content length right so server this field of interest to a penetration tester and this will help in the recon phase of a test it will display useful information about the web server hosting the website as shown here bing.com is hosted on microsoft is 8.5 the content of the web page follows the response header in the body which i already stated you right five seven two eight eight bytes this one okay then it's talking about content length so this field will be containing a value indicating the number of bytes in the body of the response and it is used so that the other party can know when the current request response has been finished okay so before moving i would again showcase you this request and response header this one is the request header if anybody has any doubt you can tell me up i will open the window for five minutes then we're gonna proceed further Anybody, any doubt, you can ask me up, no issues. Uh, hi, hi, hi. I have one question regarding to GET. You are, you yeah. already talked about that, but still I want to uh, you yeah, yeah. request you repeat it. That is no HTTP slash 1.1. What is that? The HTTP 1.1, it can be HTTP 1.2. This is actually the version of the HTTP you are using up over here. Header version. Right, it can be 1.2 as well, but not more than that. So, so, right it's now, one, it's exactly so how it is how it is decided? Like it is decided by uh, browser yeah, version standard. or some? No, 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 it is standard, right? HTTP, it is all W3C standards. So it is there. HTTP okay. 1.1, it is like deriving from there only. Okay, and if it is 1.2, then how we came to know how it's getting changed in backend? So what things are running in backend? I understand this is standard. 
But yeah, you, uh, you have to see the HTTP header implementation, right? I guess in that mm -hmm. case, 1.2, I will showcase you some example where you will see there will be more data over here. Over here, something mm -hmm. will be changed. This will be there, but one or two or three lines will more over, coming will be over here. You will see in the example, mm -hmm. right? In the that, that is fine, I understood. But, but yeah. the question is, uh, how, what technology, what things, it, this is standard, okay, I know very well. But what mm -hmm. things are running background, how it changed from 1.2 or 1.1, how least from server side, client side, how things are, means what is the architecture in backend for that? Architecture in background, okay. If you can see, I will come to it, I will come to you. Just give me one minute, okay. huh? just one minute, let okay. me fix it. Okay. All right. Thanks. Uh, we have two, three more questions. I'm coming to it. No issues. Can you please explain deflate? I missed, right? Okay, Miss Pragya. Uh, it is like uh, these are gzip and deflate. These are the compression methods that are used uh, in the HTTP request and the response headers, right? Uh, the benefit of this is, I would say, because you are sending a couple of large data from the client to the server and server to the client, right? So it has to be compressed. So your query can go easily fast and the processing can be done right uh, keep alive 300 and 300 is the default value mr natraj uh, it can be 400 also it can be 6000 also no problem it all depends upon the configuration if you are starting up from the scratch that how much you are going to keep that session alive right for example you generally see when you log in to uh, bank sites right 10 minutes after that what finish you are kicked out of the session right so they maintain a session timeout right the page they are maintaining the activity like that right uh app, accept cache set right okay accepted cache set i would say utf it encoding is there right there are a couple of more encoding you have character encoding as well over here so this accepted cache set is used over there Uh, Karan, I have a question. So, uh, in user agent, it shows Mozilla. Mozilla, so it means uh, like uh, the client is using Mozilla, but it sh it says then Linux. So, it does it mean it is uh, using Mozilla on Linux machine? Correct, right. Correct. And what about then? Okay, and it and this Linux could be Ubuntu or this. What is this? Jacko. Uh, just wait. Okay. Uh, this must be, this must be, I would say the default font they will be using, right? Jayco must be the font. It is not a server. It is not any kind of technical, must be the font maybe they are using. It okay. is coming from the Ubuntu family over there. Right. Okay. Thank just you. one moment. Okay. Any other question you can ask anybody, just I'm fixing the screen, then I'm coming to you. Usually, uh, hi Karan. Usually, this um, this this information goes to the server like uh, uh, Mozilla and Linux and whatever Windows. Usually, this. I mean to say that information you said right, like uh, Mozilla, the type of browser and what type of Windows type of OS it's using uh, by the mm. client. Usually that information goes to the server or is there any way to, you know, minimize this information? You can, you so can, you can. This is risky, right? It. Yeah, this is risky, 100%. This is risky. Yeah, because in, anybody can intercept and know my my browser and it's a bag. For them, it's easy to, you know, place the payload. Place the payload, right. <coughs> Correct. Right. So it can be hidden, like uh, you can say from the server end, we can play up these things easily. You can. These things right. can be right. Thank you. So yep. one question that was asked by HTTP. Yeah, right. So um, Mr. Vijay, I think you asked or someone else asked. Ah, okay. Right. So HTTP version 1.1 and or you see 1.2 are here, right? So 1.1, if you see, I told you originally Tim Berners, he, he started off with 1994 thing, right? So technically, if you see the changes that are been made, so we have to look at these things which I was talking about, this thing, right? 
For example, let's say you are visiting the domain example.com when you are navigating the web browser will send the HTTP in the form of this. Okay, that is get method and simple this. It is going on. Right, so it is going application layer, transport and this. It is going like this. Particularly, exactly like this it is going. Right, technically it is going. Right, there is much to discuss about the lower level of the stack but in order to gain a higher level of understanding we should know the extracted layer model where HTTP figures out. Right. So HTTP 2 1.2 when you come out to be right like I told you like there are different verbs, methods and headers. We talk about this right 3.2, 4.2 something these kind of stuff. So delivery model, the delivery model is little bit different right. So I would say it is it will contain HTTP 1.1 things along with it but when it comes to uh, get request, post request, generally HTTP 1.2 you will see post request over there, right? There is a uh, change in the binary framing layer. So you can see technically if you want to go, they are changing the strings, bytes of data over there, right? So mm -hmm. 1.1, it is very simple. They are going stream prioritization they are doing. This is the technical difference if you are talking about. So structure. It remains the same. If you talk about the base structure, HTTP 1.1 and 1.2, some things will be added, right? Like buffer overflow, they are improving over there in 1.2. 1.1, it is okay. Right? Flow control, it is there. 1.1 flow control, it is there, but buffer overflow, they are maintaining over there, right? So uh, during the practical, you keep keep a note of it, and even if you have a doubt, ask me again. In the end. Okay, in the you will see 1.1 and 1.2 both in my practice. Okay, all right. Hey, Karan, so, uh, yeah. uh, yeah. I have one doubt here. Uh, it's again regarding the uh, timeout value. So, as we as we know that uh, the TCP uh, is the underlying protocol. So, I believe this this timeout is different uh, from the TCP. This is basically for the HTTP only, correct? Correct, correct, correct. Session timeout we are talking about over here. Okay, okay. And the second thing is, uh, if we, uh, as you said, means when we uh, work, uh, means work with the banking side, if we click on some, some like any, any, any particular point in, in any of the site, so uh -huh. will it open a new thread for HTTP or it's, it's using the same thread? Because no, uh, no, no. Same, it's same. 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 Okay. If your IP is there, if your browser is there, until, until you are closing the browser, even next time you gonna, until you log out, right? So the same mm -hmm. thing is going with you same thing right you can say there are certain kind of csrf tokens are there bank side will give you a token for a particular time after that you see there is a counter sometime you go into the bank side there is a counter running you can operate the session you can see your account summary and all the stuff if you are not doing any kind of activity he will kick you out of the session why he will kick you because the code token will expire and it will be not allocated to anybody in the near future. It is all encrypted going on today. Session cookies, everything is going in an encryption when it comes to a bank website. Right? So in order okay. if you see you want to compromise or something, I would, to be very frank, I would directly say be a part of a bank node. Then you can play something good inside that application. If it is a private one, outside if you try to do something, they are using lease lines, right? couple of more securities are there throughout the network you're going to break that and then you will reach up to the and no one has that much time to waste out so you have to be a part of uh, that particular network that particular node and then you can play up with the things right all right guys no issues uh, we're gonna discuss about cookie then coming back to OWASP top 10 again and some practically stuff we will do right since we have studied right now error codes, we have studied right now HTTP request and response, we gonna know something that what is happening between the application, right? Now, as the process is going from the client side to the server side, who is going to take care of these things? It is cookie, right? So cookie is the actual mechanism which the session ID is passed back and forth between the client and the web server. When using cookies, the server assign the client a unique ID, which I was talking about. In today's term, it is CSRF tokens, right? 
by setting the set cookie field in the http response header so you're going to see like unique id right that is for every client it is different by setting the set cookie field in the http response header when the client receive the header it will store the value of the cookie that is the session id with the browser associated it to the website url that send it, sends it when a user revisits the original site the browser will send the cookie value across identifying the user that means for a particular user we have a cookie inside with us okay just one moment yeah we are talking about here so cookie flow between the server and the client as you can see the picture we have browser at the left hand side we have a server that sets a cookie right so you can see we are sending a get request we can send a post request as well we can send a port method select method trace we're going to see couple of method now list html and http 1.1 this is the header that is going coming back from the server he is setting up the cookie language english set cookie php some id server is adding this in the response header okay now the browser sends the cookie back in subsequent request so you can see get login dot cgi whatever page is there user equal to john he is adding this thing so that means in the http request now the user is adding this thing and this gonna continue until you are talking to the server it's going to continue like this only right so for a particular session we we have this kind of stuff with us right the same thing happens up when you visit amazon.com i'm particularly saying amazon.com because we are most of the audience are from india and you are saying amazon.com the first time you visit from your browser it's going to take a load right it will go to the server server will assign you something he will diagnose you you are you are user agent your request ip host everything right the cookie will come and it will stay inside your browser right you close it you come next day you come and you open the website amazon.com again it's going to be fast why because you have already cache data associated with you right a cookie is there but it is the page cookie right now it is not the session cookie right so it will it can use that cookie as well and if amazon is saying okay i will allow it you're going to be having talking to this amazon.com very easily right now there are two type of cookie over here if you talk about we have permanent cookie and we have temporary cookie right so what is the difference between now permanent and temporary temporary cookie will finish off and it will go away from the browser as soon as you close the browser there is no need to clean it there is no need to use any other tool like cc cleaner or any other stuff no need permanent one will stay inside your browser i will give you another example amazon.com this time you don't visit the site this time you log in into the site right you log in you see couple of products you see grocery you see electronics everything okay finish after that you log out right now you open facebook.com facebook.com as soon as you open what will happen the same ad which was coming on amazon.com it will start reflecting in facebook.com site as well actually to be very frank it is not facebook who is tracking you it is amazon who is tracking you to see your likings and all those stuff to get rid of this we what we do is we actually use certain kind of ad blockers right we we have that right can we generate uh, randomly generate cookies yes sir it is generally it is almost uh, randomly generated why do we need to use iso for encoding okay i'll come to that question in the uh, span of 5 minutes again i'll come come to it right so 
I was talking about this cookie, so they're going to use that, and they're going to see you're going to see the same ad over there, right? So generally, we use these kind of ad blockers and all those stuff so that it doesn't come, right? And when your browser becomes slow as well, generally you go you go to the settings, and what you do is you clear the data, right? So when you clear carefully, if you look at that particular, uh, let me showcase you. Right, I'm going to the settings. If you write here, clear data, right? You see, particularly over here, you have cookies inside data, right? And you have cached web content of 51 MBs. That means whatever cache is made by all of the sites, I have this, and I have zero bytes of cookie right now because I am already using a private browsing, so nothing will be stored into my browser as of now but yes we can do that mr vijay there are two cookies uh, no like yeah it can be uh, stored in the permanent it can be both in that case but here uh, as of the slides if you talk about i'm generally talking about cookies this is not i'm saying like temporary or permanent it is a journal cookie definition right so let's go ahead with these uh, parameters now inside cookie right uh, so what happened is uh, http response okay is there have a look on this first the cookie then we're going to discuss All right, so as you can see the highlighted one, set cookie, ID is something written, domain, email.com, path it is written, slash mail, secure, HTTP only written and expires, right? It's going to expire on that particular thing. After that, you see that we have HTTP 1.1, 200, okay, response 200, okay, is there. So domain, domain, as you can see, domain, we can see over here, path, you can see the further lockdown, the cookie, the path parameter can be specified, right? So where it is, from where it is storing or from where it is coming, you can see if the domain specified is email.com, the path is set to slash email. It can be any other folder, no issues. The cookie would not be sent to the pages inside email slash mail, would only be sent to this particular path, right? So whatever you give, xyz.com slash email slash current it will go to that particular path only nowhere else right and http only secure it is coming http only not https nothing it is being here right so http only you can see this is a parameter that is set to mitigate the risk posed by the cross-site scripting attack and the javascript won't be able to access the cookie over here Secure it is written. If this is set, you can see secure. One kind of secure thing is written over here. So secure is set. The cookie is sent over SSL only. So you can see security little bit by little bit of coding or little bit of change. We can see that we, we have made it encrypted over here. Right. And you can see expires. So expires is giving you the timestamp over here. So the cookie will be storing until the time specified in the parameter. Right, so you can see HTTP only is there, secure is there. So by HTTP only, it will be you will not be able to perform cross-site scripting and JavaScript over here. So that means this particular cookie parameter we cannot modify and we cannot play. This is a small uh, code check over here or secure code that we can add up. Right, so this is going to be the simple architecture of cookie. Simple architecture. Right. Now we're going to talk about HTTP methods, right? So HTTP methods, as all of my examples was showcasing you get request, right? You can see that we have get, we have head, we have post, we have put method, we have delete method, connect method, options method, and trace method, right? So if we're going to talk about HTTP methods right now, so what does it mean? So HTTP method defines the set of requests to indicate the desired action 
that is performed for a given resource they can also be nouns right these request methods are sometimes referred to as http verbs as we have seen it before as well right so let's study one by one in depth what does it mean get method right so you can see now my scheme will be divided like into two parts you can see the left hand side will be the request and the right hand side will be the response okay so response will be from the server end left is the request right is the response all right so the get request retrieves data from a web server by specifying parameters in the url portion of the request this is the main method and it is used to used for document retrieval so you can see get means something you are getting it from the server right so you can see right now what we are doing is get document dot htm right the htm or html or any other php any other object or any other thing that you want to get out you can add it over here you will add along with that you are adding http 1.1 right user agent host accepted language encoding connection keep alive no issue from the response you can see http response 200 okay means the request has been processed successfully everything will be processed easily and it is coming in a very better way to the client end side right date is there server is there last modified date is there accepted range bytes content length 88 bytes we going to see previously we have seen it 57288 bytes correct content type it's a html file and you can see at the bottom it is starting body hello world h1 and this that means we are able to get this document dot htm from the server end. so this is what get method is doing to us all right now we going to talk about head method right before going to it have a look on it have a look on it the get methods uh mr ayaz you are saying there are two dates one is the expired date so if you visit the same website before the expired date then assign the same cookie uh like in today's scenario if you talk about before the expired date whenever you are start starting up a session so a new cookie will be assigned to you in today's 2020 if you talk about right so it's going to be a new one every time whenever you are uh, going to start up right then uh, sir will you cover cross site scripting yes it will be there mr ritwik it will be there okay i guess this is fine right we'll open the chat window and discussion window soon don't worry about it head method now right so the head method is similar to the get one okay no issues in terms of functionality accept the server replies with the response line headers but no entity body is there right so as you can see like we are requesting exam example dot htm it is saying 200 response okay but it is not showcasing you the contents of the file correct so this is the only difference between the head and the get method in get method we are able to get the body of that particular file but here we are not able to get the body okay rest everything remains the same everything same but there is no entity body over here that means we cannot read any kind of stuff right although if it would be in php file or any other thing possibility is there if get is not working you can try head and you can get some response out of that php file possibility is there that is why we are learning different different type of uh, methods over here okay then post right so post method just like get method we learned that we want to retrieve something so here what we are doing we are sending some data to the server for example you want to update a file form data and etc things right so the following example as you can see that we have a file called process.cgi some process some file is there which is running from cgi hyphen bin directory slash process dot cgi http one point one 
rest of the things you know it at the last line if you carefully see what i what we are trying to say over here that they are using certain kind of xml envelope over here XML version 1.0 encoding UTF-8 browser encoding strings XML NS name server you will see clearforest.com and there is a string so string is like custom tag over here you can say then the server side what you are saying he is saying 200 okay again everything is perfectly executed right and in the response what we are saying we are getting a response from the server request process successfully so this xml thing we're going to talk about in uh, xml external entities don't worry about it so cgi if you talk about what is cgi cgi is nothing it is a common gateway interface we call it's an interface specification for web servers to execute programs like console application running on a server right that generate web pages dynamically so it is like common gateway interface what it is doing it is an interface specification to the web server to execute programs like console application right so certain kind of you can say you can perform by this method command injection we can easily perform right external xml entities this kind of stuff at this particular format if xml is there we can perform that as well no matter what is the method it can be post it can be get no problem in that okay so over here what we are doing we are trying to update anything to the server and server is saying 200 okay everything okay that means he is accepting whatever user is sending from the uh, client side from the application server side the database server or any application server it is accepting it and he's saying a request processed successfully all right next method is put method right so put method is used to request the server to store that included entity body at a location specified by the ur right so for example you are saying over here put example html.com okay rest header is same don't worry about it just left hand side bottom if you see it is written body h1 hello world h1 close body close html close that means you are creating a this file from the client side right you are sending it to the server you are saying put that means create this file store this file with you and whatever location i give store it over there server is saying 201 created right so i think we had a doubt regarding 201 here it is 201 created right date is there server is there content type text by html content length 30 it's going to calculate automatically connection is closed after that in the heading one it is saying file was created that means from the outside any person can try to use this put method and try to store anything on the server this is also possible that we are imposing anything to the server right so that is why we have put method over here cool then we're gonna see delete method right so you can see delete method is used to delete a file right now just we have used put to put anything and now we are using delete method to delete that particular file from the server right so what we are saying delete example.html http 1.1 user agent everything is same now it goes to the server server is saying 200 okay everything okay process successfully coming back returning he is returning an body within heading one is saying url deleted that means the server from the server end the file has been deleted now right although although we cannot say this is a hundred percent proof method error logs and event logs are there at the server end we can see what is happening from the outside world right but yes possibilities are there we can play with the method over here then we're gonna say connect right so connect is used by the client to establish a network connection to a web server over http the following request you can see we are making connect www.xyz.com 
you can say also that you will write connect you will write your ip your public ip also you can write your private ip also you can write right and you can send this request and you can see at the server end it is again saying 200 connection established so the status code that we studied in the beginning of the session today 201 was created 200 was session established that means you are able to make a connection a network connection with the web server right so this is connect method all right then we are going to have option method so options you are saying over here the options method is used by the client to find out http method and other options supported by the web server the client can specify a url followed by an asterisk symbol to refer the entire server star means all right so the following example request a list of method supported by a web server running on xyz.com right option star http 1.1 they are sent right you can see you can see in the response he is saying get head post options and trace that means these all are method which are possible at the server end and the server is using these kind of options 200 response okay is there and just below the server you can read allow it is written get head post options and trace and we can try to exploit in this particular way right so option star it gonna see everything over here all right if it is a response 200 okay if it is response 200 okay if there is a check at the server end then we cannot do anything all right now we have trace method that is the last method right so the trace method is used to echo the contents of a http request back to the requester that can be used for debugging purpose at the time of development how we can say that that it will echo the content of the request right you will write trace http 1.1 that's it okay after that you are saying host you are saying www.google.com or any other thing and in the response he is saying that it is used for the debugging purposes at the time of development right so you can see trace method an entire header whatever it is there it is going to get you that what you can do with it right so it is used by the requester that can be used to access for debugging purposes right so you can see like okay it is giving you a response 200 okay that means trace method is working fine so any other kind of uh, thing is there you can write trace it will give you a response header maybe it will get it will give you get it will give you post so we can play up something like this right again i'm just giving you a quick revision if anybody miss it right so these are the http methods that we have discussed so far over here get head post put delete connect options and trace right get method that means you are trying to retrieve something from the database right that means sorry web server right so you are writing get document.htm and in the response it is giving you a content of that particular file right this is all about get then head method is there which was exactly the same as of get response 200 okay is there in the response but there is no body entity over there right that means we cannot see the content of any kind of stuff over here it's only gonna be 200 okay response that's it all right then we have post method post means you are trying to update form data or any other kind of stuff over here all right so we're gonna have like cgi bin process cgi common gateway interface that is nothing but the interface specification for the web servers right and we are trying to put this particular file over there right we are trying to update this particular file not put put is different right and we can say request process successfully so they are using certain kind of xml envelopes over here and they are saying there is a string called clear forest dot com which they are trying to access and it is saying request process successfully at the other end all right then we have put put means you are trying to create up a file at the server end 
So you are writing put example.html and it is going to put up a file on the server. Right. So it has been giving you a message 201 created right now, not 200 OK, because that is used for uh, 200 OK response from the server end. This is created response. So we have file created over here. All right. Then we have delete method. So if you want to delete something from a particular requested location, right? So you can write delete and example.html or the whole path of that particular file. It's going to say you, you are deleted, right? Then we have connect method, connect and you write the target. If it is successfully there, it will give you 200 connection established. Not 201 because it is used for created 200 OK. It was for response OK response. And here we have 200 connection established. That means we are able to communicate with the a network connection is there between you and the web server. Right. Then we're going to have options. So options is option star will give you all the things which are allowed on that particular web server. Right. So what are the supported list of methods running on the web server? We can go by options, right? And we have a trace. So trace method is used to echo the content of the HTTP request. So whatever you are giving, you see trace HTTP one, trace means it will echo, just like an echo command in Linux, right? So it's gonna echo everything and it's gonna see and you can see like 200 responses coming from the server along with whatever you have sent it in the uh, header, right? So even trace HTTP, everything is coming at the bottom, right? Anybody has uh, any doubt in the methods, you can let me know. The chat window is open. You can interact right now. There is no issues. Can head method be used like a post? Can head method will be used? No, 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 it cannot be. Head method can be used as a get. That is okay. Get away. Okay. Not as post. We you cannot do any kind of post of it. Okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah. So, Karan, uh, many times we talk about uh, post is uh, secure enough uh, as compared to get. The reason is given behind is uh, a get is stored in the browser history. Post is post is noticed part of the browser history and uh, 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 if they secure the data is sent by the body. If you can give a more clarity on this uh, nice. kind of nice. comparison. Yeah, I can give you like get what happens in get like uh, generally when whenever we are visiting any kind of website, right? For example, let's suppose I go to this, right? So what happens? You are hundred percent right that get can be bookmarked. It will be saved, and you can see the parameters are there in the URL, right? And this is because they are using get parameters right now. Today's situation, if you talk about any kind of website, any kind of CMS, if you are using, right, or any kind of modern applications that you are using up in the real time world. So everything will be stopped after a flash. There will be nothing, right? List product, the extension will not be there for sure. It will be like this, simple, right? That is why it is saying like it is secure. You can say it is secure just by looking at it, right? Because you cannot say like it is PHP or GSP or anything. You cannot. Just like you can see our uh, company website, anything, anything you open, any page you open, let's suppose you open gallery. The extension is not going to come. It's not going to come because it's a post method over here. It's not going to come, right? So. Generally, yes, it is a safer idea. It is a better idea that we use post from the outside world. But, but, but when it comes to security, I can not say if your website is HTTP or HTTPS, right? Or you are using a post method, you are secure. No, we cannot say this. The reason being because see, we were playing with this stuff. We are playing with the header stuff, right? So over here, you need to look around for a couple of things. You have to maintain server security as well. You have to maintain business logic, secure code, your application server. You need to focus somewhere around there as well. It's not about only about the methods, but yes, the good practice, modern practice or any other CMS automated tool, even with any kind of scratch coding, 
we are using post method in the request and the response always but i am not i'll not say like it's secure no otherwise you will not see any kind of hack with uh, facebook twitter or any other everyone is using a post method only right so people they try to play around these kind of header stuff in burp suit a lot a lot they play right any other question anybody you can ask me up ye karan in the continuation of same uh... No, generally yeah. the best practice is to send the data in the body, not in the header. So yeah, can correct. we apply the same thing in the post method also, or uh, uh, the body start with after this header, or the, just want yeah, to have a clarity? Yeah, yeah. See, the body is separate, right? Body is separate. Yeah. Okay. Say. This is just you are when you are using for communication, right? So as you can see in this particular example, nowadays if you talk about, you will use XML, right? So XML is there. You can define your custom tag. The reason why we use XML is because it's lightweight, right? You can create your own custom tags. You can have data inside it. You can transfer the data. After that, release it. Even for data transferring, you can use JSON parser as well. This is used by XML parser. You can use JSON parser as well to transfer the data. That is why generally you see when you log into uh, Google, right? You see the the ajax call is been made the json is there and you see a right swipe that is because of the effect and after that the data is passed very easily right because they are maintaining objects over there serialization of the object is there so when it comes to data these kind of stuff comes in xml envelope deserialization serialization these kind of stuff comes into the picture it has to do nothing with the content and all because we are talking about data over here Right? Yeah, the best practices like says we have to use post method. That is true, hundred percent. Multiple method in the same request you can use, sir, no problem. But think about the response from the server. It's gonna execute multiple times, right? So it's better you use stick to one method and you can use. It's gonna take if you have a good capacity server, you can use at multiple stages. If it is possible, is it possible that we request in GET but the response in POST or other method? A uh, little bit difficult. No, Mr. Soswan, yeah, it is not at all like this possible that you are doing something else and getting something else. No, it's like in that case, I would say that will be a honeypot responding to you or any other thing. But it doesn't be like this. That means like the middle middleware or the middle server has been compromised. If you are getting something else in the response, right? Uh, can you uh, uh, put, um, show some difference between post and put method? I think put is also used for uploading files, right? You are hundred percent right. Right here, if you carefully see yeah. what. What we have written that we are making a file update, right? Mm -hmm. It's not that we are creating up a new file. We are updating a file. So bin CGI bin okay. process bin CGI is one of the file we are trying to update it, right? So any kind of form data which is there, we are trying to update it. When it comes to put, put means you are creating up a new file. There is a slight, always there is a difference over the. Right. Okay. So it, can we create a new file using post? You can create no 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 not at all possible. Not possible. Okay. Not possible. You can call calling possible like NC connections, you can make a reverse TCP connection back. That is possible, but mm -hmm. new file not possible. Okay. Yeah. So it's good job. So if you transfer some file from a uh, client to the server, then it will come under uh, post method, correct? If you are, if you are, like if you are, if we are transferring a file from client to the server, then it will be a part of post method, correct? Yeah, correct, correct. Okay. Yeah. Alright guys, uh, so as per the plan, right, so we have covered these things with us, now we have to study OWASP.
top 10 2017 right we have to study in detail about these things so let's have a break for 10 minutes right now exactly 10 minutes we're gonna start at 3 35 pm it's gonna be a break for all have a break i will respond to your queries and your questions after the break right so have your break and then we're gonna study the oas top 10 2017 along with some practical implementation uh right so first thing is we're gonna talk about injections right so injections the very easiest way to understand injection is we have injections vaccine or anti diode for human body as well right what we do is like we inject first of all a testing dose is being given if it is a major disease or something and if it is okay it gonna respond properly right if not it will start giving you some allergic reaction and all those stuff right same thing injections right whenever we talking about injection we are actually trying to interact with the web server right in a language that web server will understand web server will not understand simple binary language or the language which we are speaking they only understand query language right being it you talk about oracle database being it you talk about mysql you talk about ms sql you talk about today's scenario no sql postgres mongodb any kind of things right oracle padding injections couple of more injections are there over here right so our main area or main area of interest i would say like from the beginning from the front end i would say you are trying to inject something in the web application that is like true that is giving you a true result and it goes to the server end and everything will be there right now how the application is vulnerable in this case when you are not properly sanitizing the input you are not validating the input you are not filtering the input right in that case anyone can inject from anywhere it can be a url it can be a form it can be username password fields it can be contact form it can be from the http header as well right so keep these things in mind right we're going to talk about mitigations as well right so these are the stuffs which i was talking about that you can see like strings right they are adding something in the string and it is going to a database they are calling and it will be fine right we generally see one or one equal one when we go through the practical i will explain you more 101 equal one it's an authentication bypass right and how it work that workflow i will explain you for sure so this is an overview of this then we're gonna say we have broken authentication right so broken authentication you can see generally people what they do they put default credential one of the easiest real life example i would say your router password your router ip is 192.168.1.1 or 0.1 okay and what is the password admin admin or admin password since ages we have not have changed it it should be changed right someone using a very less encrypted thing in the application it can also become vulnerable broken authentication right someone people are using password password are stored in md5 or base64 encoding style anyone can just decode it or decrypt it and you can see right broken access uh, authentication you can see like you have uh, exposing session id which is not at all required right if session id if i am able to guess the next session id i can play with the session a lot right so particularly when we talk about single sign ons there are certain tokens right so in that case if you are not able you are not authenticating that thing properly even if the user is logged out i can able to log in again and it's a single sign on i can access multiple things right so multiple encryption nowadays if you talk about we have products like octa is there you have multi-factor authentication uh, you have authentication with your apps as well just like yahoo mail you need to add a yahoo key to it facebook you talk about you have a facebook key secure key is there so we can have multiple layer of authentications with us right captcha captcha bypassing even captcha bypassing is there otp bypass otp next otp generation token we can do right 
four pen you can say four or six digit nowadays banking are even giving seven to eight digits we have also seen this right so why because they have to make it right yeah um, whosoever like anonymous for the router we have to enter into the network that's right that's right for sure but i was just giving right that is default credential that we are being using up right when we talk about uh, sensitive data exposure right so sensitive data exposure just like uh, we can say underlining protocol we are using http so everything will be in clear text right so generally we say we have to use https right now there is one more attack like we can say we have an attack from https to http we call it uh, ssl stripping right where you can strip off the ssl certificate and then you can try to see the entire uh, data in http format and http everybody knows it's in plain text right then we going to have like uh, pass like file upload vulnerability over here we can say right so a file is there or you can say you can upload a file and you can try to extract out something that is possible you are able to read the configuration file of that particular application you are able to read the uh, database files right so database file that have hash password passwords you can copy that password and you can try to crack those passwords and try to make an authentication with it right so this is all coming under sensitive data exposure right previously it was at a later stage it was at a4 or a5 but now it is at a3 right external xml entities i will come back to it in a little bit i will explain you in detail what does it mean right broken access control so broken access control uh, we going to talk about here like uh, this scenario particularly scenario 1 i am talking about over here like it is exposing of uh, something account info question mark you have account equal to not my account right you can change it to anything else for example it can be any user account right for example you have a user account called james right i can write account is equal to james and i can access that particular account right that is possible over here i can access a particular file as well how i can write slash and i can see it right so these kind of stuff is possible there is a tool in uh, owasp field we call it owasp directory buster which can burst out some directories for you which you can easily accessible from the outside world so this is happening because there is no uh, control over this particular uh, folder or a file and we are able to directly use it right so that is all coming under broken access control we can say privilege escalations also so from here only let's suppose you are logged in i am also logged in i try to find out figure out some username i am trying in the uh, this parameter value and if i am successful i can easily easily go into that particular username and i can see it right so this is like privilege escalations we can take it as, as an example over here right then uh, we have security misconfiguration this is uh, one of the simplest things like people what they do is like they use unnecessary ports services which are open default username password outdated technologies they are not upgrading the system right and uh, their security headers directories they are not pushing a policy they are not hardening the application it should be a hardened application right and uh, they are not uh, using let's suppose you install wordpress framework plugins are there they are not updating the plugins so by default if you are not updating the plugins for a particular time of period after some time some vulnerability will come in that plugin and that application will be exposed this is possible right so people are doing this thing in security misconfiguration can be a port protocol or any other security misconfiguration right then cross site scripting again i will come to it because i have to explain xml as well i'll come to it in short very nice security serialization also will uh, study up very nicely component with known vulnerabilities right so component with known vulnerabilities is something like this people know that there is a vulnerability but they are 
still continuing to use it they are not upgrading software is vulnerable that's why you see even today you will see mysql ms sql you see oracle you see they are not trying to upgrade to postgres reason being the application is working fine let it be working no it's not like that right we they are not doing regularly scanning of that application they are not hardening the application the database the apis runtime environment they are not focusing upon their main goal is the application is working fine it should not be like this we have to focus certain other factor as well in order to secure the web application as a whole right so this is about that and the last one is insufficient logging and monitoring right this is uh, placed at the last and you can see people try to do brute force people try to have vpn trying to access the application from different location people don't focus on the logs error events login fails transactions they are not focusing upon anywhere right so logging and monitoring should be there we should use any kind of uh, tool to monitor it or even by default i will showcase you like how you can see some error logs event logs in that uh, particular area in the web server of a website you can see that in the server and all of these things can be easily understand right okay so i have one question what do you mean by sanitize user input uh, mr naman just give me one quick minute i will explain you one by one right so coming back to a1 i want to explain two attacks over there then we going to jump to xml and then cross site scripting right so anyone has any doubt you can ask me i am opening the window for 5 minutes again anyone want to ask any questions whatever we discuss right now in a broader overview of oas top 10 right okay no issues we are focusing on a1 right now i will discuss two scenarios with you practically right practically will go automation and manual both we will go okay so this is like uh, we going to talk about a1 only here right so we are talking about simple one or one equal one query over here right we are talking about this over here all right okay so in just a moment yeah we have a query start query is injection type all right okay no issues so we gonna simply we are focusing on this right so as you can see like one or one equal one by default it doesn't have any meaning by the way it is all binary right now it has no meaning right so generally what happen is we are presented up with a form right and uh, we have username and we have password field and we have a button here called login right so what people are generally doing they are they are adding what they are adding over here one or one equal one right they are adding here also one or one equal one right actually it doesn't go like this directly how it goes around is if you carefully see the coding of this text box in html right so the coding of this text box in html it looks something like this okay input type equal to text cool so what we are adding we are adding one or one equal one right so let's suppose i add single quotes over here 
this single quotes okay now this becomes not as a binary this is a query string now right now what does this one over one equal one means right if you carefully see this one is equal to one it is true hundred percent true this one is also equal to one this is also hundred percent true over here there is no problem at all right so that means if you are querying this thing to the database everything is gonna be fine everything is gonna be fine right so what we do is we are doing this in the username and password field we are adding this thing right we are adding this thing exactly this thing we add right it's not like only one or one equal one only this vector is possible in the world no you can write anything you can write la or current equal to current no problem it will work right for length of this four is not equal to current because this is five no problem but this one is equal to five it will work because either of the case should be true right so it's not gonna be one thing you can add any kind of vector over here but the end result you have to make the query true if between you when that means if between you and the db server if anything goes as true server will give you true results only it's simple right now have a have a very simple question very simple question i have i'm writing this once again right once again i'm writing so this is one or one equal one right and what i'm doing is i'm adding this thing this thing this thing this thing can anybody let me know that why i am not adding this thing over here why not single quote in the front end in the end uh, yeah. yeah yeah try try anybody can try you have no issues why i am not adding in the front and in the end are it is already present in uh, sql it is already present in the uh, sql okay cool any other in on the html code um, it already has um a uh, starting um com um um like text just the way you got imputes uh, equals to text so right. the first one will take the first by the last one before right. the uh, tag to take the last yeah. it take the last one right yes both of the answers are correct thank you mr samuel and the other guy right uh -huh. you are right so if we carefully see let's suppose if i am trying to add right if i am trying to add let's suppose over here and over here in the input text these things are there right this is coming from where this is coming from here right this is coming from where this is coming from here they both are saying that mysql always i will add that is 100% true right but if you carefully see this double e single quote double quote sorry cannot be equal to a single quote at any time this cannot be equal to this at any time right inside query everything is balanced everything is balanced right but this will make the balance will make the balanced query unbalanced that is why we are not adding any kind of code over here it's not at all required right we have to add only one or one equal one right so i'm just giving you in the chat box one thing you all can try giving you the website link as well this is the vector right and uh, i'm giving you the website this one right so if you open this site and you go to sign up page there is a login page you all can try up this thing over here into your browsers there is no problem at all right so if you can see like i am adding one or one equal one over here simple and one or one over here simple right and you click on login and you are in right you are directly in you are actually in right 
So, Mr. Naman, as soon as you ask a question, sanitize user input. If this kind of query was sanitized over here, right, this attack would not been happened. This means sanitization, right? You have to filter it. You have to add some control over it. Okay. So that's the reason it happened, right? And uh, my second question to you is, you all can try on this website, no issues. My second question to you all is, which record it will give to me? I am in the site, but this is which record? Is it like admin or is it like user? Which one? Anybody can answer. Are you sure it's admin? I or think it's it best yeah. user. It's a best user. Mr. Samuel, yes, your answer is like correct. He's right. It will always return just because of the table. Always. Yes, uh, whosoever is Mr. R, you are also right. <laughs> right. It will always record you first record from the database. So this is going to happen like this. Right. Uh, and uh, one more, this is like first thing which I discuss with you and I want to discuss one more thing that uh, states about union based injection, right? One more over it, manual and automated both we're going to see. Right, I hope everybody is clear with this. If you have doubt, you can let me know. Any kind of doubt you have over this, you can let me know. There are multiple kind of payload list is available on GitHub as well. So right? can you explain this, uh, you know, the PowerPoint once again, please? Which one? This one? Yes, the paint. The paint. Okay, okay, no issues. See, uh, we have one or one equal one. By default, it doesn't have any meaning, right? So I am using a green highlighter right now. So by default, it doesn't have any meaning with us, right? What we are trying to do is we added this single quotes. As soon as we added this, it becomes a query string to us, right? So because database always understand query strings. So we write select star from EMP and we end it with the semicolon. That's a query string that you send, right? So it's an SQL language, structured query language that database understands. So if you see, we have generally username and password over here like this, right? And what we're going to have, we're going to have input type equal to text. So this is a simple HTML coding of what? Of this text box, of this text box, anything, right? So what we are trying to do, we are trying to inject one or one equal one over here. And you can see that we are not adding any kind of single code in the front and in the end. Reason being, if you see over here, this thing, if this thing comes up over here and you add single quote also. So a double quote cannot be equal to a single quote at any cost of time, right? So we don't add in the front end in the end because it will be automatically included at the server end, right? Because your query goes in uh, single quotes over there. So you don't need to add in the front end in the end. You just need to add this simple thing. This simple thing to the user's name, the user's name and password. If it is uh, not sanitized properly, you will be landing into the first record. Even if you don't write, let's suppose I write in the username, I don't write in the password. I click login and it doesn't go right. I only write in the password. I don't give any username. It's still there. That means it is not validating the username and password even. And sanitization is also not there. That means the query is passing. So how do we sanitize it? Like, I understood if we do not sanitize it, we can attack it. It's vulnerable. So how do we sanitize it? You can do this thing at the DB end that these kind of queries should be stopped. This thing, you can use a parameter, uh, parameterized stored queries, right? Which convert these kind of stuff in such a uh, language or you can say code that the database will never understand it and you can block these things even. You can add up a 
VAP also. There is no issues. So okay. because multi layer, you can add up a VAP here as well. No issues. It will block it. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Sir. Go ahead. Uh, actually, the when we sign up any website, it will ask you for that username and password, right? To sign up, like uh, that time, it will tell you the password is did not match the the username or number or the alphabetic input validation uh, there, right? But Valid the same thing, same same thing. This one, right? Like this can be mitigation over there, mitigation. right? Right, correct, correct. And also, you need to accept only particular format, right? It's not going to be like we can inject script vector over here. No. these things you need to play at the web level you can play at the code level also secure coding we can do over this and this thing you can play at the db level as well so this how, is how, pretty well okay yeah. how this web is determining whether it is this like a, a kind of a sql injection or something WAF, you... nowadays if you talk about let's suppose if you are talking about impova right impova in capsula is there one of it so they detected uh, the uh, particular format in capsula right like this is one of the wrap that we can use it right uh, the common one if you want to use the open source we have mod security with you this is right so they detect whatever is uh, coming from the outside to this particular thing you can define the format just like you have parallel right you can uh add the rules for the web application as well and it will work perfectly in that case we have akamai also as a solution which works the same way we have to give the input like you have to accept this kind of input you have to deny accept yes, this we to, like we have yeah, to yeah. make a white list and black list or something correct correct you're right even by ip also everything you can state up over here understand it's a kind of a web application firewall only right you can add up rules there is no problem right so it will not prevent you from these kind of stuff so even if there is a wrap there are possibilities there are ways to bypass the wrap also in that case we encode the query in character encode or hex encode or base 64 encoding or base 32 encoding and then we are able to send it to the target in that case the wrap will not understand what is coming in and he will be able to bypass so possibilities are there always right so mitigations is also there security is also there it goes everywhere like this right okay thank you so no issues we going to talk about uh, this thing now union based sql injection right so union by the keyword generally we say union of people right it's it's a combination always right so what we say like we need to group them all together right so here you can see we have seven steps to follow it we can follow one by one right the step one says that we have to test for the sql injection right sql injections how we can test for the sql injections that we have to add a single code at the end of the url we have to add like this simple right <clears throat> after this what will happen the page will start throwing you certain errors right like it will showcase you my sql syntax error okay this is the first step second step says that we have to know that how many columns are there in the website okay how we can get it we can get it by order by query right order by we have to write 5 10 12 like this we have to keep on increasing until we get an error called unknown column clause okay that is fine third step says that we have to know that which column is vulnerable now right that union select 1 2 3 4 5 whatever number we get we have to select all the columns it will display you certain numbers on the page then we can say that these columns are vulnerable i will tell you why reason also that why we say this and step 4 says that we can exploit this vulnerability we can try to inject database users and version in place of vulnerable columns let's first perform Four steps, then we gonna proceed, right? So 
So you can open this uh, particular URL with you. In uh, Firefox, no Google Chrome, I would say. Why I'm saying this? Because Google Chrome will block half of the attack. Right? Right? So you can say this one is there. First of all, we have to find, find something where we can inject the parameter. Right now, I'm talking about get request. For post, I will explain you how we can go ahead. So I'm going to the categories page. I'm using this posters, right? So again, you can all see your chat box one by one, what I'm, I'm doing, right? So cat equal to one. First step was add a single quote, add a single quote. As soon as we add a single quote, we are getting a my SQL syntax error as I said you. Right now, why this error came? Right, you can see over here we are at the first step. Right, I am saying cat equal to id id equal to one question mark id equal to one. Right, and we are adding this. Actually, what happened in real time? This id is not equal to one. This is not written like this in the coding. It is written like this. Okay, id. Double quote inside it, digit is there and we are adding a, again one more quote to it, right? So actually what we are trying to do, we are writing, I will write it again, this one and we are adding one more quote. This was balanced. It was balancing this quote. We are making it unbalanced from the outside world, right? So if URL filtering is there, this attack will not work. If WAF is there, this attack it will not work. If Sanitization is there, they are accepting in the response. Server is there, server response, server site security is there, it will not work. Okay. And this is a get request again. If it is a post one, we have to do the same thing in the burp suit request. So during the session, you will see the burp suit as well. Right. So that is why this thing is working. Cool. Right. So we get to know that this page is a vulnerable page. Our first step is completed as per these steps okay now the second step it says that how many vulnerable column the site has we have to find a number of columns all right so what we can do is we can add right you can see the steps in the chat box again so i am adding order by five minus minus i will explain you what is this Right, okay, it says certain error over here. It should not be. The page return as it is. There is no problem. Right, again, chat box, keep an eye on the chat box as well. So I am adding 10. No problem. 10 also, no problem. I am adding 15. Problem. Unknown column 15. Right, let's try to decrease it. 14 problem 13 problem 12 again an issue and we have 11 11 is working fine that means we have total number of columns we have 11 with us right as we can see we have one picture one two three four five six six pictures we have right so I when I'm pasting everything in the chat box till 11 we go and it is working fine. Let's understand this step also, right? So what we are doing over here is we are focusing on order by 11 minus minus. It was working, right? So let's understand this how it is working up. Minus minus is known as a commenting vector. Okay, we need to understand that minus minus is known as a commenting vector. What does it mean? It doesn't mean that we have to write always minus minus. We can add minus minus space minus. We can add minus minus. We can write hash. We can write dollar. We can write anything, right? Any special symbol which is there on the keyboard, you can write no issues in that. Reason being why we are adding is that we have 
to tell the server that now the statement is ending here before the statements was ending here now it is ending up at the order by 11 11 right 11 minus minus space minus so we have to tell to the server that now the statement is ending over here because we have added as a user right so that is why we are ending and till 11 it is working 12 it is not working that means we have an indication that the site contains only 11 columns only 11 columns total number of columns okay this is fine now the third step third step says that we have to find the number of vulnerable columns how we can find just write union select 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 till 11 okay we are writing till 11 right now over here so you can see i am writing union select all 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and 11 as we previously noticed that we have one two three four five six images are there on the screen as of now i am giving you this query also in the chat box you all can see right so this one is running perfectly some problem no issues we can check what is the problem one, 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 one comma yeah one comma perfect perfect right cool thank you for it and one comma we can write oh, okay i need to change up in the chat box as well so it is one comma right cool as we can do we will see that we have something a image a broken image is coming with the number seven two and nine that means seven two and nine are vulnerable this is the meaning of this okay now after this what we can play we can play with 7 2 and 9 i will tell you how this column becomes vulnerable column right so point number three right we are adding all union select we are adding all 1 2 3 till 11 minus minus everything right and it's going to give you 7 2 and 9 on the screen printing with a broken image right so what happens up in the database sometime we are adding let's suppose you are visiting a result website or a very busy website you are trying to add up the content sometime it is uh, reloading sometime your query pass it says error sometime right now these columns become null in that case right null or some missing data is there some half data there and your query dropped those actually those columns become vulnerable for us it is displaying those things only over here on the screen seven two and nine right we can manipulate a little bit more you can see the url right now i will manipulate i will write category equal to minus one lakh one hundred thousand right so as soon as I write this, I am deliberately doing this. No one give a category ID minus one lakh. No one gives it. But as you can see now, we have one more digit on the screen that is 11. That means we have four total columns that are vulnerable. 7, 2, 9 and 11. Right. So I am again pasting the query over there only. Now, if you see 7, 2, and 9, right? So let's suppose instead of 7, I am writing a simple thing called database. Database, and I'm adding the parenthesis. That means I'm calling the default database function, right? And version, I'm writing version, and instead of 9, I am writing the version. 2, I am not touching. Database and version, we are able to see right now. Let's see. You can see on the screen right now that we have a database name called IQART and this is the entire version which is reflecting right it's not a short short thing you can write it on anywhere instead of 7 2 and 9 you can write anywhere database anywhere version anywhere right instead of 11 I am writing one more thing also called user user function right 
as you can see now the user is acuart at the rate localhost cool i'm adding this query as well to the chat box right holding the slide for a minute if anybody has any doubt in the four steps do let me know four steps the first one is adding up a single quote second step is like we are finding the vulnerable total number of columns then we are finding total number of vulnerable columns then we are finding that how can we exploit this vulnerability we are trying to enumerate the database users database and the version that's it okay Hello, sir. Can you please repeat one, one more time? Yeah, yeah, I will repeat. I will repeat. Uh, Mr. Sri Ganesh Prabhakaran, like I would say, why you are you are saying like union and all those stuff? Because if you talk about like I have my SQL, right? So my SQL is like eighty percent, eighty five percent of the sites are being injected by union base easily. If you talk about MS SQL, Microsoft SQL Server. those databases are exposed to error based sql injection this is union based sql injection which is therefore my sql right that is why we are using these kind of stuff right and for the one who wants repetition right i would say sir what we are doing over here step 1 2 3 4 step 1 we are just adding a single quote right to test whether the website is vulnerable or not after that second step is there we are saying order by whatever it is there column number we are writing over here so i will explain you right i will give you a quick shot over here so categories and we have posters this is category id equal to 1 right then we are adding the first step adding a single quote it will give you my sql syntax error that means the page is vulnerable this is the meaning of this after that what we are doing is we are adding order by let's suppose i am adding 10 minus minus so what we are doing is minus minus plus or minus minus space minus no issues what we are trying to do is we are accessing the column number 10 over here right so you can see it is reflecting normally there is no problem i will try to increase i will try to increase by 2 12 12 says there is problem that means 12th column is not present right i can go with 11 11 is present there is no problem that means the total number of columns are 11 okay now what i am doing is i am selecting the entire thing in one go union select all 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 cool as you can see the total number of images on the page is 1 2 3 4 5 6 images are there. okay i am pressing enter union select all 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 10, i can be able to see this particular image 7 2 and 9 three digits are printing on the screen before it was not there that means these columns are vulnerable columns right how these become vulnerable sometimes when we do concurrent queries some things become null sometimes garbage value those columns become vulnerable right we have to optimize the database so that these kind of stuff doesn't happen right even these kind of query should not be allowed in the urls okay now after that what i did i did a very blunder mistake over here i am doing minus 1 lakh over here i see one more number printing on the screen 11 as well along with that particular image because no one gives a page id minus 1 lakh no one right so instead of 7 2 and 9 what i am trying to do is i am writing database i am adding version and i am adding user As you can see up over here, accurate. We have accurate at the rate local host, right? 
So instead of this was seven, right? Seven was I added database over here. This is two. Instead of two, I added user, and instead of nine, I added over here version. You can write version at eleven also. There is not a hard and fast rule that you have to add it over here. Okay. So I think now this has been clear to everybody. Now what our next thing is, our next thing is like we have to find the table name. Okay. So table name, and then we have to focus on column. Right, and then in the end we get select star from EMP. That is the rocket science query that everybody knows, right? So we are focusing on one thing that is union select. We are writing something from information schema underscore schema dot tables where tables table schema is equal to database, right? Now let's understand this structure first of all. That what is the schema along those stuff that is coming on on the screen? So. How does it happen? To be very frank, in PHP, my admin, I will showcase you that information schema is on the top, right? It's a kind of a blueprint, and every kind of database exists inside it only inside information underscore schema. The database is going to have tables. Tables are going to have some columns, and columns is going to have some data inside it. This is how it goes around. right so information underscore schema is nothing it's a blueprint right it's a schema it's a structure that how database tables and columns will look like what kind of data type you will use like uh, will you be use varchar int or how many bytes everything it's going to be related over here so generally we call it a blueprint just remember it as a blueprint over here cool now we're going to see this particular query how it goes around right so what i do is i just copy paste this right and i will make a little bit change inside it according to our needs okay so as you can see up over here so r actually r second column was vulnerable over here so i will remove second instead of second i am writing this 3 4 5 6 Exactly, I am putting the same thing. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. No problem. No problem at all. Okay. So three comma four five six. It's going to be looking fine. Let's see whether it works or not. I am giving you minus minus. Still minus minus. I am giving you. Right. So you all can also put into your browser and check. So I will also check over here. So after one lakh, I am adding these things. oops as soon as i did because it was second right so as you can see now we have multiple images these are all table names coming up on your screen artist cards category featured guest book pictures products users all of these things are table name right so we going to be using users because i think this is going to be a proficient one and it look like very interesting to us but we can enumerate all of them as well right so this is users over here cool so next query we going to talk about so next query we can make simply from this query only i'm just copy pasting right see how we can follow now column name instead of table name i am adding column name cool from information underscore schema dot changing one thing columns okay where table schema not required because we know the table name now right so schema there is no requirement of it and table name i am giving it under single quote users this is my query which has been made done 100% it should work right so let's go ahead with this copy and i'll give it to you in the chat box and i will try up over here as well oops it is working perfectly fine again right i got username you name i got pass as a column these are different columns cc address i got email i got name right i got phone and i got card as well you can see multiple things i am getting up 
So two interesting things which are there with me is uname and pass. Kindly remember this. Uname and pass, we're going to use it, right? Okay. Now, the query, the last one which I'm talking about, which everybody knows it, that we always use select star from EMP. Okay. So that is the same thing I will do. Instead of EMP, we have user here now. This whole thing is not required because we are writing select star from EMP. Always remember that format. Okay. So instead of column name, because we know that uname and pass is there. Uname, comma, pass. What do you think? This query will work or not? Anybody? Any answer from your side, it going to work or not? See what happens up over here again. This will not work. I will tell you why it will not work. So you are writing one comma u name. You are writing name. You are writing three, four, five till eleven. This is actually one. This is actually two, this is actually three, and this is three becomes four. So you are increasing one, right? So let me just copy paste. You will understand it better that how I am saying this. Just a moment. Yeah. So my query was this. Let me see. Copy and paste it over here. Correct? Different number of columns. Error. What we do now? We can we can remove one. Simple way. Remove one. Pass. Password is right now test. Okay? And if I replace pass, I will not include pass. I will include uname. It will showcase me uname also. That is also pass. In case you want both of them to be at the same place, what you can do? Simple glitch, nothing is there. So group underscore concat is also one of the function which we can use up over here. And I can add a single, I'm adding a single uh, space inside it so that we all can make a change over here or we can guess easily what is happening, right? So group underscore concat will group both the entities, right? And it's gonna going like this. So you will see, sorry, you will see test test. This is the username and password. Right? Yes, Mr. Inku, it is it was right. Your question is right, your answer is right. So if you can log in with test test, right? So sign up. Let's log in with test test also. Test and test. You are again in. Someone tried direct traverse with no issues. Right? So you are in using this. Right? Anyone has any doubt in these seven steps, you can ask me out. I cannot repeat the whole. It's going to take time. You can ask me doubts if you have. Then we're going to go with the automation. Uh, Mr. Apas, uh, it's better you ask me this question around one and a half hours after it, right? Fast, I will explain you. Static application security testing and dynamic application security testing. I will explain you. Right. All right, guys, uh, let's see one automation of it and let's uh, I will switch it to external entity and deserialization and cross site scripting, right? So if you're going to see the automation for it, right, the automation is very simple. We can uh, browse the same website over here and we're going to use one tool called SQL map, okay? So let me browse that site again over here. Mm -hmm. 
all right same url everything same you can see now the things will be there in front of you within two minutes within two minutes right i am copying the link just copying the link making it super user and after that i write sql map hyphen u that is for url and this one i will write hyphen hyphen dbs and hyphen hyphen batch what is the meaning of this statement the meaning of this statement is sql map is a tool for sql injections right union uh, sorry not union union error based command injection any kind of stuff we can perform with this it's an automated tool right and it's widely used open source you can find it in kali or anywhere any pen testing distribution it works in windows as well minus u becomes url i am giving the vulnerable url just vulnerable url no single quote nothing okay then we going to have hyphen hyphen dbs that is database and hyphen hyphen batch means go with the default configuration it will not ask you yes no yes no kind of option i'm pressing enter let's see the result what it's uh, going to do right as you, you can see like couple of things happened and quickly it has enumerated acquart and information underscore schema with manual method it was taking 3 minutes to reach here okay now you see the next query which is similar to this one minus d capital d i am adding acquart minus minus tables minus d is for database acquart is the database minus minus table i am writing for the tables and minus minus batch let's see what is the query result you can see we can see all the tables over here okay now we have to choose users as we all know right so what we can do is we can write capital t for table users and what i am using i am using dump all switch hyphen hyphen dump all hyphen hyphen batch is still there okay so what is the query now the query is saying that you are choosing you are choosing database acquart you are choosing table as users and you are writing minus minus dump all dumping all the data right so let's see what's data is there in user like you can see if there is a password he is trying to crack it automatically by default it is using its own dictionary you can see the dictionary lies up over here user share sql map data text and word list something something it is written over there just above you can see right so it's going to take some time and it will give you all the result whatever there is in user table it going to give you the result completely right so we will come back to it once it is completed rest right now focus on xml external entities right so i hope this injection is clear to you and we are switching to external xml entities right now for the moment right and then cross site scripting and insecure decentralization we need to understand that how does it happen actually in real life right uh mr tinku you have a question time based sql injection or error based i will keep in mind and i will uh, by the end of the session i will explain you what is this i have one more question called sast so keep these questions with you i am going to explain you in the end for sure today all right so what we talk about here is xml external entities okay which we call x x e attack right to be very frank this was present before also before 2013 also x s e was there it's not like 2017 that done something good or new it was there this attack was there previously as well right but not that much popular so what happened up in xml actually i will tell you 
HTML and XML, if you compare, the thin line difference is in XML, you can create your own custom tags. For example, you can have a tag like this also, Bob and Bob close. You can have a tag like this also, right? So in XML, what does it mean? We have a web application, right? We have a web app and inside this web app, what happens up? We have an XML parser over here. Okay, so just a moment. All right. So what we have? We have over here a XML parser, right? Now, what is the duty and what is this XML parser and why this is used in the web application? Cool. So what is done like application is accepting xml over here right so what is in this xml in xml we make an xml envelope we call it right so it's gonna start something like this xml doc we write the doc type document type we write something like this inside it right and then what we write we write a reference what we write, we write a reference to what? Reference to external entity so that it can make a call. Right? This is there. Right? Okay. This is there. Now, what and how an attacker can exploit these kind of stuff? Right? So, this XML you gonna see in the header as you all have seen in the http request header that we have something written xml version 1.0 encoding utf8 doc type something something right so a bad person what he can do he can play up with this xml envelope or xml data over here so a bad person can inject a payload to run over here As soon as he inject a payload to run over here, the XML, this whole thing, this whole stuff will go to the XML parser, right? If it is passing from the XML parser, whatever is requested from the server, whatever requested from the server, it will commit to you. Everything will come to you. Okay. So for example, let's suppose you try to request the ETC password file. From the server it will start showcasing you the password if it is an ubuntu server it will start showcasing you the password over here correct so what this is how like this attack happens because we are making certain changes in the xml request over here and if the xml parser if this parser is going to parse it then server will respond to you whatever you want Cool. Now there are three stages where we can apply the security over here as you can see. For example, you can have security at the XML parser that why you are parsing these kind of stuff. We can head a check over there at the XML parser. We can head a check over at just like we studied input sanitization. We can head a check over there as well. Correct. Then at the server end also this if this kind of soap envelope or you can say this kind of XML envelope you are sending to the server end, it should not execute, it should drop. Right? It should not be like you are executing a command from anywhere. No. Arbitrary file upload or arbitrary command injection will happen from anywhere in them in that case. Right. So particularly we have one more uh, use case for it, I would say, and I would like to showcase you. That is uh, known as XML billion laugh attack. Right, as you can see the screen now. Right, if you carefully look at this particular code snippet, we have XML version 1.0, which is of no doubt, no issues. I tell, I told you we have to write a doc type. They are writing lols over here. Entity type, they are writing lol, right? No problem. Entity one, 
they are adding some data over here something 10 right if i count this is almost 10 right so 10 times they're adding low 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 and all those stuff cool in the second entity lol2 they are adding the first lol entity over here they are calling it again similarly it goes when they reach the lol9 so if we count from 1 to 9 like we have 9 over here right and in the end they are saying we have to call the ninth one that means the ninth one will call the eighth one eighth one will call seven six five four three two one it goes like this right so what happens up over here that this whole the whole processing will go to the xml parser xml parser will have all the entity after expansion will have been processed this is small less than a kb of xml that is actually 10 raised to the power 9 million loads that would take 3 gigabits of memory in that particular case the application will crash it can do dos attack as well this is the meaning of billion law attack through xml because if you are sending this much big data we can do this kind of stuff easily right anyone has any doubt over here in this particular diagram you can ask me up yeah hi Karan. for sql injection we use sql maps for xml xml entity attack what tool we will use we will use bob suit sir simple keep it simple okay right great thanks XML parser is a service running on the server. No, Mr. Rajni, uh, is it? It's not uh, running on the server. It's at the application server end only. It's not the database server. You can say business logic where you are maintaining. Front end is different. Application logic there it goes to the XML parser. So in three tier architecture, you have a front end application server, and then you have a uh, database. Right. So that is why these kind of stuff is happening in the XML parser. So it's, it's not kind of a service, I would say. Yeah, we are going through the practical implementation. So it's not a server as you can say. It's like you just compile a code, right? So you have a compiler. So just like for XML, we have an XML parser for it. Okay. All right. So I will showcase you that uh, I have a machine running over here, which is like XSE and it is on Ubuntu something, right? and uh, i got the ip for it this the ip for it is like 192.168.0.24 cool now it's an ubuntu page showcasing me nothing else it is showcasing me nothing else right i cannot do anything with it let's do let's do there is a critical file i would say robots.txt okay carefully examine what is written on the screen right now? Okay, he's saying he's saying this actually robots.txt. It's a file that will showcase you which thing is allowed and which thing is not allowed. He's saying disallowed and this, right? Blunder mistake. We can take the advantage of this. So we have two things: XSE and admin.php cool so i am writing xxe i get a login form over here nothing else right and if i write admin.php nothing is happening page not found but 404 as we have studied the status code today only right it is saying 404 page not found cool so let's have the default credential admin 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 oops it says sorry the admin not available okay no problem now we're gonna start uh, one thing over here that is uh, burp suit a little bit we will touch in depth i will let you know right so we are going with burp suit application right now it's a proxy so we have to set up a proxy in this uh, browser and in the Bob suit as well, and we have to see that how we can manipulate the particular XML envelope over there, right? So this is how Bob suit professional look like.
so burpsuit is nothing it's uh, you can say it's a kind of a proxy or you can easily in layman terms you can understand whatever going on between your client and the server you can see the request and the response here only okay so i'm using the burpsuit professional uh, right now if you have it you have to configure the proxy first of all right so this is how it looks like so the very basic we have to set up the proxy going to the proxy tab going to options and you can see my proxy is set up to 8081 i am setting to 8081 right deliberately i am doing this you can use 8080 also no problem the same proxy i have to set it up in the browser as well okay so that means over here so options and i can go with the proxy proxy done manual proxy 8081 okay use proxy okay proxy done everything fine burp suit is here intercept is on i will on the intercept and as soon as i click on login you can see burp suit is intercepting the things okay now whatever we have studied you can see it is coming gecko also it is coming something mozilla it is coming it is coming post HTTP 1.1 accepted language accepted encoded default compression referrer which I told you because it is redirecting text slash plain content type and we get a this one okay we intercepted this right now what we can do we can play a little bit over this right so what I am doing is I am right clicking I am going to repeater repeater is one of the tab in burp suit where you can play up with the things and you can see the response here only no need to go to the web page no need to go to the web page now it's not required right so as you can see up over here we have this xml carefully look at this xml code for a minute it's little distorted can you not maximize it Can you decrease the window size? Okay, it. okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. All right, all right. Thank you, thank you. Sir. Right. So this is the whole uh, XML they are writing UTF-8 and whatever I pass, right? I passed admin, admin. It is coming up over here. No problem, right? But uh, there is nothing to do if I click on go. i can see he is saying sorry admin not available the it is a response okay right 200 response okay it is processed properly there is no problem ubuntu we are getting ubuntu server apache we get something this from the server good no problem in that now what we can play is we can play up with this a little bit let me play this with a little bit right i am adding something new over here which is like xml version 1.0 encoding same i am adding a doc type entity admin okay system i am adding something and i am calling a file i am pulling up a file etc password right and i am calling the same entity in the username so i am writing and admin you can say i am writing and admin and in the password i am writing admin nothing nothing no relevance over this of this admin password nothing to do with it right so let's see let's repeat this request and we can see oh we are able to see the etc password of the server that means root right the location i can see over here i can see more user anything over here that means the parser he is parsing the xml envelope and it is giving me a 200 response okay from the server web server is accepting everything is working perfectly fine over here there is no issues right holding the slide here for a minute just have a look on it right etc password i am calling entity i am giving admin you can give anything it's not like i have to give admin only you can give entity karan no problem you have to write add karan over here right because it's the entity name you have to add and system file this one is a part of the envelope talk type 
and I'm calling the system command simple. Correct. So if you remember holding it, holding it, please carefully read it. You can see the headers as well. The one uh, question who's ever asked me regarding Genco, right? Genco, I have seen, uh, it's like uh, uh, Mozilla is using up a technology which is known as Genco. So Genco, Genco Trail, these kind of keyword you will see when you request from the Mozilla Firefox especially. So it's a kind of uh, technology just like we use JavaScript and all. They are using Genco for Mozilla 5.0 and above version. Okay. So the answer is that for that. Okay. So we had one more file. If you carefully remember robots.txt, we have admin.php, right? So let's try to call that file over here, admin.php, right? So I'm writing slash admin.php. Let's see. Oops. It says, it says not available. Okay. I have a very simple thing over here to do very simple thing I will do over here is I will try to encode my query right now over here. Whatever I'm requesting, I can try to encode this thing. Okay. How I can encode, you see this thing carefully, right? I will add up into the notepad as well. This one. So what I did is I added actually this. So this is PHP filter read convert base 64 encode resource equal to admin.php. What actually I'm trying to do because when I write admin.php and I click on go, the, it says sorry not available. You can see the response right now. It says sorry not available. That means he is not accepting. So what I did is I used a PHP filter. I encode whatever I'm requesting, whatever resource I'm in requesting I encoded it and I send it to the server right so in this case what will happen let's see and this case you can see something is happening at the server end again concept says this is again passed at the XML parser again passed right so I will write the XML envelope in the chat box you all can see right I am adding the in the chat box as well right so as we can see like we get something something encoded over here everything is encoded over here right so let's see let's uh, it do a base because we did a base 64 encode we have to decode it now so we have to copy this whole thing I'm copying this uh, copy right and uh, we have to change again the proxy over here so otherwise our internet will not work right so changing it to no proxy just a moment yeah so coming back over here and what I'm doing is I'm doing a base 64 decode. Base 64 decode I did. Let's see what will happen over here. I am pasting and I'm doing a decode over here. Okay. Finally, we have a code. Hmm? And that to a PHP code, that means we are able to read that admin.php file. And you can see that we have something admin is the best username right 
so i will zoom up a little bit so you all can see it easily correct i have this and i have the password in i think md5 because this is total 32 in length so let's try to see the password as well so i am writing md5 online decrypt right so let's try to decrypt it and let's see what is the password it is coming as you can see password is admin123 admin is the best and admin123 admin at the rate 123 let's try to log in right admin is the best and admin at the rate 123 sorry admin is the best is not available again an issue right since we got the file we can try if you carefully see again i am opening robots.txt you can see again that it is written xse slash star means anything i can add after it let's try xse slash admin.php let's try to open up this page right xse slash admin.php you can see oh there is a new panel that comes up let's write admin is the best and admin at the rate one two three login oh we have something over here it's written click here to read the clean the session you have entered a valid username and password that means we are successful second thing here is the flag that means there is a flag out of it okay it says not found let's see the source code source code is saying the requested parameter flag me dot out is not present over here no issues right so we can write xs e slash flag me dot out let's see because he is playing up with the directories oh it's a blank page again i'm writing xs e slash flag me dot out right again control u Oh, we got something over here. Again, it is something which is base 64, I think. Again, right? So we can say this is again giving us uh, something. So let's base 64 decode again. Let's see what it is going to give over here. Base 64, same website. Base 64 decode. I'm going up. base 64 decode not working at all let's try with uh, encoding as well sorry hashing as well bad format it is saying no issues right uh, what else we can try up over here we can try base 64 base 32 let's try base 32 decode right let's try base 32 decode okay let's try this base 32 decoding right so base 32 decoding i am putting over here decrypt oh i get a base 64 now because it is ending with with a equal to right now try to have base 64 now base 64 all right base 64 decode let's see decode Oh, I have something called etc flag dot php. Okay, copying it and I am putting after ex xxe only etc. Oh, sorry, xse slash etc slash flag dot php. I am not able to see this again. An issue, right? Let me come back to my verb suit and let me write it over here again. The same file. Paste. Okay, go. Oops, I have again one more thing with me. Right, but this is a little bit different. Let's try to see this. How much encoding they're going to play. And uh, we will go with 64 now. Let's see, 64, decode. Oh, I have something, right? I have something, right? Actually, this one is actually known at what I will tell you. This one is known as PHP no alpha to code. This code is actually known as this. 
if you google it you will tell it they will tell you it's actually scrambled in such a way that we cannot understand php so the last end result would be what i will tell you you have to copy this right and uh, you have to write like this you have to write like something like you will add php over here because that's a php application right so you'll add question mark you will add the code and in the end you will add question mark like this and you will run this php file right as soon as you run this php file you will get the flag something like this right so my idea my idea to showcase you this application was using this right using this xml parser we are able to log in right because that files were exposed and they are not accepting it a normal thing right you can see when i write like uh, slash uh, admin.php it was not accepting normally but when i add it with encoding technique i am able to read that particular file easily over here right as in, right now you can see it is not available but when i write like oh i write it uh, it's not available now it is available right it is there why because i converted into base 64 domain like this right so it is happening because xml parser is accepting these kind of stuff and in that way it is accepting the user input from here so you can see it's a post request get it is not at all a get one i didn't play it with the parameter in the url i only played the things in the burp suit that's it right anyone has any doubt you can ask me after 15 minutes give me 15 minutes then it's gonna be fine for all right all right next thing that uh, we were being uh, over there we were there with the uh, insecure deserialization right so that's a concept that is also not a new concept i would say so it's always uh, been there generally java coder or java coding these kind of stuff always happen right so deserialization and serialization don't get related to java it's not not at all related to java it can be any kind of application right so when we talk about this uh, insecure deserialization vulnerability what we are trying to focus is we have an object okay object i'm talking about object of the web application cool now it can be an object of php jsp asp anything anything in your mind it can be an object of that cool so what happens up what happens up in real life that at one end what happens that we are going to serialize the data right how are we going to serialize this object object is there right and the object is converted to byte string right so this object is converted to byte string but for what it's for processing first thing for processing because the processing is going to be fast second thing for saving it into the database because you will not save it into the plain text right so byte stream data will be going there right and to have persistence and to maintain the state of the object so it's it's like that whatever mail i send it to you integrity is maintained you are gonna have it and i gonna send it what you gonna do is your ph pgp encryption is there in the mail pretty good privacy it's gonna maintain the overall integrity and you're gonna receive it and you're gonna undo the same thing so it's kind of a packing and unpacking right so what we are doing over here object is there we are gonna serialize and on the other end what we are going to do we are going to deserialize the object the same way that we serialize it right so this is exactly in broader view what is happening over here that we serialize the object any object 
any of the object we are serializing into what into byte string okay and then we're gonna have a deserialize object at the receiver end whatever it is there and for what we are doing we are doing it for processing we are doing it for saving into the database we are doing it for persistence we are doing it for maintaining the state of the object these four points we have been doing up right so again one more uh, thing is there according to it so let's suppose we have a php forum again i'm saying php it can be anything right and you have a super cookie inside it so you have a you are saving a very good cookie inside right so cookie will be something like this user id hash and you have a state okay for example i am writing now the example a real example now for example this is the legitimate user which is alias right id is like user only you can write user username anything you are writing 1 2 3 4 and the state is xyz whatever state is there now you are coming as an attacker right so attacker will do what you will rename it to something called eve right you are saying something called admin user to admin you are changing the role over here password you keep it same and you keep this thing you are changing this thing in the cookie correct so the user input is not validated over here in this particular thing which i am talking about right the user input is not validated right so if the user input is not validated we are going to do these kind of stuff and this going to lead to where it going to do a very good amount of rce possibilities there we going to have dos also this is also possible right now how we can actually focus these kind of stuff because insecure deserialization inside an application to detect and to find and to fix up it's another challenge right because the code is so much long so what you can do is you can use like multiple tools for static and dynamic which you are talking about so multiple tools we will came across many tools are there for it right manual interaction or intervention is needed in this particular case for sure manual intervention is needed over here right and third thing is you have to scan the application time by time right until unless like you cannot find it because it it is a part of cookie right because you need to look at on the data which is flowing through it right so insecure deserialization serialization is going to be like this like very layman you can understand it's a kind of an mitm we can say so in between what is going on in byte streams right user or attacker if it is he or she is able to manipulate it and on the other end it is deserialized and the everything is accepted at the server end 200 responses coming from it it's going to be in deserialization attack for sure okay so this is the concept for it mr atul uh, in the end you ask me these kind of stuff for sure it will be there right so one more thing which uh, we going to understand is like cross site scripting right and then i'll open the window doubt window for 5 minutes and then we going to proceed okay so i'm going with cross site scripting now because it is at the seventh one right so cross site scripting cross site scripting xss right generally it's of like three types we you will see one you say reflected stored and you say dom base right reflected you say stored and you say dom based okay reflected another name we can say non persistent stored we can say another name for this tent okay and dom base is okay no problem another name you can say like 
there are multiple name type zero, type one, type two for it, right? So in reflected or in stored or in DOM based, the main thing is getting up a pop up, right? It is generally what we understand. But why this pop up is a vulnerability? No, right? We can do multiple things with a pop up. Bringing up a pop up, we can do multiple things. We can read the cookie data, we can read the page cookie, and then we can try to manipulate or play with it. So how this thing generally happens, we are generally taking advantage of JavaScript. No problem. Nowadays, we have AngularJS as well. We have Node.js as well. We have Backbone.js. Different application, different concept, but base remains the same. Okay. So let's suppose we talk about this thing called script alert one. Very simple thing, very simple query. There is no problem at all. Script one will bring you one pop up. If you write in terms of any string, let's suppose you write alert current, it's going to give you current on the screen, right? In case if you write alert document.cookie, it's going to give you the page cookie over there and we can manipulate that particular cookie as well. Okay, so if it is the case of reflective, that means we are talking about the first case. So the pop-up will come, it will not store anywhere. That is why they are saying it's non-persistent, right? And the pop-up will come and it when you click on OK, it will go away. It will never be stored. When you click on, when you talk about stored XSS or persistence XSS, this query, whatever query you are passing through the inputs, it will get and it will go to the DB and it will be stored there only. Example, I will inject one query from here. You all will visit that particular URL. It's going to be showcasing you the persistence over there only. Okay. Then we're going to talk about DOM base. DOM base is nothing. It's a special case of reflective only. In DOM base, what we do, we try to exploit the inner HTML tags. For example, you have a paragraph, you have a paragraph ID, right? I can access that particular paragraph ID. I can try to manipulate this from where? From client side only, nothing at server end, nothing at server end I'm going. I am manipulating everything at the client side only, right? So that is nothing you are playing with the DOM engine because uh, you are rendering that particular page. So document object model is there. So the query is being passed to the DOM engine. DOM is executing it and DOM is rendering the same thing on the page. Cool. So this is what we have it in cross-site scripting. Let's see the structure one by one, right? Before I go, I will open up the window for... Uh, Five minutes. Anyone has any doubt, you can ask me up. Hi, Karan. For cross-site scripting, so yeah. we're gonna use the bug suit or some other tool. We gonna right now. I gonna see. I will showcase you right now the manual method. Once we touch deep dive of bug suit. I will tell you how we can make it automated. Okay, great, right. thanks. Yeah. All right, guys. So my simple thing is like, first of all, reflected. Cool script i will write in the url and i will give it to you as well script alert one script close cool i am pasting this in the chat box so what I'm doing is, you can also try the same uh, website, same website, right? I am over here in the search box. I'm writing script alert one. I'm clicking on OK. 
as you can see that we are receiving one pop up that means it is reflected right another way of getting it is like as soon as i click on uh, okay it's going to go right and if i click on home nothing is coming up so it's reflective nothing right another way is doing this you can write up anything called hello you will write hello web app right so it is reflecting hello web app that means i can inject something and it is reflecting is the same thing on the body right so i can do again and it will give me some kind of error it is giving right no issues so this is like reflective it will come up over here and that will be reflective right if we go to sign up right and let's suppose i sign it by test test okay so i will let's suppose i deliberately i am doing it in everywhere everywhere i am doing and let's change it to this is going good i am writing in the alert box right and i am pasting this the same thing i am pasting in the chat box as well you all can see right and if i click on update this is good right can any one of you can visit the same page what is reflecting right now can you tell me this link i have pasted in the chat box right i can open up a new instance uh, over here and i can paste the thing over here okay right so once you log in let's suppose i log in by test test right so anyone changes it again no problem if you see it will be come coming under same exactly the same it will be persistent over here right so that means it will be a stored one user php test php okay 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 wait let me do it again anyone visited the link anyone got this is good only i believe you will get this particular thing right so if i open the same url i think copy and i open the same url over here again this is a problem coming no issues right but if it is working fine i would say there is problem with the website right now it has lost some connection so the pop up will be persistence you log out you log out and you log in again the pop up will be here only that will be the stored one right because it will be injected into the database anyone call that particular page you will be able to see that page that pop up again right okay mr ritwik thanks like he is getting right so mind me like he is blocking my ip no issues in that case right now i going to showcase you uh, one more thing called uh, dom base xss right so i going to showcase you one address based dom okay so i clicked on a particular link and it is giving me reloading 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 again and again cool carefully look at this code and tell me what we can play with it carefully look at it one or two minutes i am giving you and tell me what things we can play okay i will help you all a little bit over here right so if you carefully see this is giving me one variable payload okay one variable payload is there window.location.hash 
subscreen one that is uh, window dot location means this you see the white area right now this is all window dot location dot hash hash means like if we add a hash any at any page we add a hash after it that means it's going to break the request so whatever it is happening you can see this url is going into reloading stage again and again it's going to not it will stop if i add a hash you will say it is again reloading reloading but if i add some more parameters after it it will stop right so what my idea is i will add i will showcase you this url in notepad completely what my idea is that what we do is after this we add a hash javascript colon alert 1 okay so as soon as i do this as soon as i do this what will happen actually this is one of the way another way of calling alert pop up on the screen correct so javascript colon alert one will give me the pop up hash means the request is going to break over here it will not go to the server end it will be rendering at the client side only we are breaking the request with this hash okay cool then what we have over here is it will assign the payload whatever i am assigning javascript colon alert one it will assign it to this window dot location right and substring one means length one that is why i added only one over here cool so let me add the same url i will showcase you the same url i am giving you in the chat box and you can all see that right i will add it up over here and i press you can see one right now again as i told you it is a special case of reflective this is a dom base it is not going to the server end and we are actually manipulating these parameters whatever i assigned it is going to the document object model in very simple way what you want to understand what is a document object model what it is doing let's suppose you write an html code right whatever you write head body html something it goes up to the browser the browser before giving it to the user let's suppose you have a user whatever on the front end whatever you see the browser is having an engine called dom dom engine we have okay so this will be converting to html inside html you have head you have body you have title all this structure it is going up like this okay so this structure will be understandable by the browser otherwise who will make us understand that browser will understand what is html what is php there should be certain kind of compiler engine something should be there right so this is the responsibility he will make us the browser understand what is actually there in the code and we are trying to play the inner html tags over here whatever right right now i played with a javascript code where payload i just assign everything whatever i can do from my url to here so dom engine is manipulating right now the url before going to the server you can see before going to the server that means i added a hash right so hash is stopping the request the request will not go to the server and javascript colon alert one is gonna compile at the client side only that is why this pop up is coming right now you might have a question that can how we can play with these kind of payloads right so we have multiple ovasp xss cheat sheet cool so xss filter evasion cheat sheet is there we have more than 87 ways where you can write how to call a pop up because validation today nowadays it is there we can have it these things right second thing is we can have uh, oasp xss prevention cheat sheet is also there which can be used by the coders at the time of doing secure coding right so these kind of rules we should be able to implement in order to stop these kind of stuff right so all these thing is there uh, we call it like cheat sheet you can have uh, xss prevention cheat sheet 
for uh, OASP, right? So these are the steps that we can do, right? All right. Anyone has any question, you can ask me up. Yeah, hi, hi Karan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I was studying something, okay, two days back, so I can right. see if I'm talking about these days, okay, if uh -huh. uh, like there are some tools available in the market, okay, so right. if I'm writing the code, okay, so they mm -hmm. can do the advanced testing, like for example, post-site scripting and some other one, like OISP, top 10, this right. kind of things. Right. So I think that if we are using that tools during the build phase, during the testing phase, or we can say, so there are some some companies using some DST, industrial processed kind of testing. Okay, I think this can be overrated, right? This can be overrated, right? Perfect. Yeah. That is why it has come from A3 to A7. It came yeah. down. Okay. Right. That's the okay, reason. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No thanks. Uh, this is a, uh, actually uh, this is part of those cups, right? Like you know, from the development environment. Ah, development uh, side, correct, correct. You're right. So we have like dependency checker, defect dojo, these kind of stuff working up over there. You okay. can use that, right? Okay. okay. So we're gonna do a little bit more practical stuff now. Half an hour left. We're gonna go with the practical stuff only, right? So we have netcraft. Uh, we are going with footprinting you can say or website kung fu we call it who is domain tool is there archive.org is there dns queries dns stuff facebook tools which i will showcase you virus total google docs cert.sh and we have some command line tools called fears dns maps sublister what web and dimitri and dirb okay can, so, can you make full screen please this is full screen only i believe so okay yeah, yeah yeah this is full screen yeah right so we're gonna go one by one i wanna go one by one with uh, everything so let's start with simple google docs right so google docs what happen up is like generally we Search out something. Let's suppose you write hacking tools. Let's suppose you write. Okay. How much tools we are getting right now? We are getting almost 8 lakh or maybe billion. Like it goes like this. Right. So in order to have less thing over here, what we can do, we can add some queries like site in. In is for India. Right. You can write in URL. You can write admin login.php, something like that we can add up. Okay. So if you talk about this blue one, this one is actually known as the title. This black one is actually known as the description. Right. And whatever you call this one is the URL. URL, title, and description, it goes like this. Okay. Everywhere it goes like this. Cool. So in the top, what I'm doing is I'm writing site in in URL admin underscore login dot PHP, let's suppose, right? If I write, I get only 38,000 results, right? And I'm not adding any kind of colon over here. This is actually optional. You can add and you cannot add. There is no problem in that. Cool. Second thing is, let's suppose you have a website. Let's suppose you have Microsoft.com. And you are saying that you want to have all the PDF for it. Just write file type PDF. Okay. So as soon as you write file type PDF, all the PDF will be sorted in front of you. You can write PPTX. It will sort all the PPT for you. There is no problem at all. Cool. I can type any n number of queries I can see, right? These are all like Google Docs is saying to us. Then there are a couple of website which is important, like Netcraft is one of it. Netcraft.com, I'm gonna open it, right? Then I am opening who is domain tools. Okay. 
then i am opening called one called archive.org this one or internet search no problem right or we can say wayback machine also okay this one wayback machine right okay i opened that and i am opening virus total right and i am opening cert.sh and facebook tools i will showcase you right so one by one we're gonna study starting from netcraft.com right so netcraft is one of the important site and it will give you couple of ips general information regarding the target where it is hosted public ip and netcraft is actually used by most of the tools in kali linux when it comes to information gathering okay so we're going to go with cisco.com right now and it is searching and in quite a while it will give you all the details over here right same thing i can do with who is as well right so we have site report now it has been completed you can see the result over here name server hosting company top level ip domains and all the stuff right it will give you all the stuff over here everything over here. right if it is vulnerable sender policy framework anything expired you can see whatever technology is being used by the target everything over here okay then we have who is record over here right so who is record will give you name server ns record registrant details and it can give you fax number or any other kind of contact detail you can see up over here this thing can be hidden let's suppose you have a blog you have a personal site personal blog you have to purchase a service called domain privacy protection from the vendor where you have purchased your domain name okay so this thing who is record can be hidden in that case all right then we going to talk about uh, archive.org right here way back machine let's suppose we want to look like how google look back in 1990s we can go ahead with this also right google.co.united and it you can see it has given us a timeline right and couple of bubbles as you can see in the calendar form so i can click on any one of them cool and uh, i can go let's suppose to 2005 i can go to february 4 2005 anywhere and i can see how google looks like google was looking like this how it is important when you are talking about passive reconnaissance so might be you get a older id or you get a client detail or any kind of stuff using this it is possible okay then we going to talk about virus total over here so virus total we have three tabs file url and search right so url you can specify any url and check whether it is malicious or not it will tell you right file you can upload a file but there is a file size limitation 140 mb maximum you can upload after that you cannot right and as per the corporate policy we cannot upload any kind of thing over there. that's not allowed right search you can search it by ip domain any kind of information it is going to help you out for sure right then we going to talk about uh, cert.sh let's suppose i write cisco.com so cert.sh is actually used when it uh, comes to uh, talking about certification right so if you want to see the certification revocation time expiration time these kind of stuff we can see it over here along with the sub domains so you can see right now there are couple of sub domains not before not after log that and we have all the information regarding cisco.com over here regarding in terms of s certificate right so you can see certificate issuer is us you have an OU is there. Common name is there. SSL. You can see details about a particular certificate. You can see the keys as well, right? 
So sometimes possibility happens when we are able to uh, log in into the server. We can see something authentication kind of stuff over here as well, right? Then we have one Facebook tool called Facebook tool. If you see Facebook CT tool, we call it. Right, certificate transparency. Right, so let's just hold it. Uh, I'm just logging in. Right, so here is the URL I'm pasting in the chat box. As you can see now, this is certificate transparency monitoring. Right, so let's suppose I write a domain name cisco.com over here. You can see every detail just like crt.sh. Every detail you can see. Right? You see US, UC, St. Louis, everything, right? Common name you can see. You can see OU also, organization unit, everything regarding the. And this is the fastest, right? This is one of the fastest tool we can say for subdomains, right? You can see I just clicked and I get a couple of subdomains over here. You can see how much it is going. 21,500. 13 right so i can go you can see run dot uh, something something it is going everything it is there just with one click right and results are proficient the i will say false positive they these are not there because you can see facebook so the chances are very low over here that you don't get anything accurate over here okay so we just we just uh, right now we just set couple of tools regarding this right and command line i will do with you don't worry once we touch uh, wordpress in another 15 minutes we'll be touching it so i will tell you over there i want to give you a small challenge right the entire batch i want to give you one small challenge let's see who is going to solve it the tools are there on your screen right and uh, you have a website which is this I am giving in the chat box. Right. You all have to tell me whether this site is a phishing site or not. If yes, how it is phishing? You have to tell me this. Alright. Tool is there with you. Don't worry about that. All the tools are written on the slides. You can easily find it on Google. You have to tell me whether this site is a phishing site or not. From the total virus, we can say. Yes, it's fishing. From the, from the virus. Virus. Right. Okay, cool. All right. Any any other thing? Any other thing? Only one of them is saying that it is fishing, right? Oh yeah. Only one of them is saying. What about the rest of the things? It's redirecting to WW6 something. Okay, okay, I can say redirection one problem. Cool. Yeah, I'm getting bad gateway if I'm trying to access. Mm -hmm. And it is so happening. One more thing uh, which I want to share with the entire team right now is this website, right? Security website check. Have a look on this and try to scan with this. Everyone.
Anybody has any answer? No, it's not. It uh, says uh, no malware right. found. Uh, Rashu Kumar or yeah, it, the site is blacklisted. You're right, man. Yes, yeah, site is blacklisted. Yep. Any other? Any other? Anyone tried? Uh, by the way, uh, Google. just an important information like uh, we will be extending by 15 minutes just for like wordpress because i don't want to lose you so we will be extending only 15 minutes maximum we will go right uh, that's all will be fine right okay oh, someone give me the whole thing huh? okay ac type block type mr sandeep deswal very nice server time okay no malware found site is not blacklisted no mr retwick it is blacklisted you can see it on uh, this particular you can see on the screen right now security website check it will check you it will save you right virus total also report has to be phishing anyone tried any other way rather than tools right i don't want to focus on tools right now the http https we cannot say like it's malicious right we cannot say like this oh okay. Anyone tried Google? Any Google answer? The one of detail also is not there. Like it is hosting by unknown and powered by unknown. Powered by unknown and hosting by unknown. Ah, very nice. Very nice. Mr. Abbas, you are right. HTTP, HTTP is not. Can we say no, Mr. Rithvik? No, you cannot say. Ms. Jyoti, you are saying redirecting to it when checked on Google. It is yeah. The original URL actually they are using is like techangroos.com.au. Very nice. Like this was expected uh, from the batch, right? So nice attempt, right? You can see Google and you will see two stories about them that uh, they are actually not legitimate company, right? and uh, they are not good in terms of providing services by the way right so uh, not a big deal no it's it was a good attempt from uh, your side no issues at all focus on the screen right now we're going to start with uh, burp suit once again okay so tab by tab i will go one by one i will go and i will explain you what is burp suit means to us Okay, keep the answers with you. In the end, we will do. Yes, Mr. Sandeep, you are right. Mr. Arunagiri Kohli, you are right. Correct, right. So as you can see on the screen right now, we have a Bob Suit Professional with us, right? So you can see the first tab is like target, where you're gonna see your all targets over here, right? You're gonna see all the pages over here in the content tab and issues and whatever things you will see over here only. So burp suit, we gotta understand it's it's a proxy. First of all, don't say it as a scanner or something. It's a proxy. We have another tool called Paros proxy that is not popular. OWASP Zap that is not top popular, but that can do the same stuff. This is having more functionality, right? Second tab we gonna see is we have proxy, which I told you that we have to set it up this thing in the browser, right? So everything we have to set it up in the browser. Uh, like port and the proxy and burp suit can be used for mobile also so the in the mobile also we can also uh, set up the proxy and you can intercept the traffic over there as well okay then we have a tab called spider over here so spider means you are crawling the entire web page and you are able to see that what are the all the possible pages are there inside the application or web application okay then we have scanner this scanner is not available in burp suit community version scanner is only available with burp suit profession okay intruder intruder means 
these is where this kind this tab means to us is that any kind of parameter you gonna play for example you want to play with the id you want to play with the username you want to play with the password you can put up a checklist over here and you can play something over here as well i will showcase you a small demo over here right repeater as i already told you that we have something repetition repeater over here we can bring the request over here and we can repeat without going to the browser end without going to the browser end okay so this is like it is there in the repeater then we have sequencer we have decoder you can decode anything over here or encode anything over here for example base 64 it will showcase you something like this okay then we have a comparer you can compare the two piece of code over here that what are the things that is over there right in two piece you can write php code here here and you can compare that which lines are being added and which things are being removed like these kind of stuff okay coming to extender extender is just like we have multiple plugins like yesterday we said plugins so plugins burp suit extensions are there we can have uh, multiple plugins with us for burp suit which enhance the functionality of burp suit okay when it comes to sequencer i will tell you what is a sequencer right so sequencer as you can see right now sequencer is to analyze the randomness in an application session token when i was talking to you about csrf token on the next session id to predict right as you can see over here token location with response cookie form field and custom location and capture the live options number of threads we can use so once you capture the traffic over here you can put up a brute force you can add up a list over here and you can predict the next session or the next token over here this is what sequencer tab do in a burp suit okay so we're gonna set a proxy and let's see what we can play with us okay so my browser my browser is this option here proxy manual proxy i am adding 127.0.0.1 and we're gonna have 8081 okay everything fine let's visit one uh, website again at the test php that side only again it's gonna be easy for us so setting up the proxy going to web suit yeah uh, is the the web suit will act as a forward proxy right it will act as a forward proxy right reverse proxy also you can do it by extension that is possible okay, okay right? thanks so 80 81 is there over here and i am making the intercept on and let's bring up the traffic to burp suit now so as you can see as i click on reload again the browser is still in reloading stage right and i see something some traffic over here because i have some other tabs also opened right forward i can see my host over here that means i have the request over here let's right click send it to spider yes yes i'm giving sending to spider spider is running and you can see it is attempting something at the user info.php i say okay ignore the form no problem i go to target as soon as you see this is the target these are all the pages that is there in the website you can see this you see artist id equal to three category id one where we attacked right now right just few minutes back so these are all the things and you can see the entire structure of the website over here on the left hand side i'm holding it you can see over here Mr. Tinku, I'll give you the answer. Don't worry about it. Right? So these all things I can do. I can do a scanning over here as well. Then to do an active scan. Right? So it is scanning right now. You can see. This is at the scanning queue. And it is 0% complete right now. But it has pointed out 4 issues right now. It will take up some time. No problem in that right and it's gonna give you the result so you have seen some uh, objectives of it like what we can play one more play i can give it to you intercept off right and uh, let's go to it and let's uh, go to home 
and let's try admin over here right admin i am writing and i am coming to burp suit again proxy on right you see the screen now i click on go right and you see i have search for admin over here correct now leave the browser don't worry about it i can go to parameter and you can see something over here you see search for admin right one parameter is there i can change the parameter i can click on forward over here it can forward no problem okay but i will go to intruder going to intruder you can see intruder is there now okay i am going to positions as you can see by default this is being selected i will clear all the position clear i will just add this okay just adding admin as a position click on add right i am selecting one attack time called as cluster bomb right highest threat actor and payload when it come to payload that means i can add up a list because i have selected only one payload over here so that is why this is the payload one right admin is the payload one okay so payload i can add up anything over here let's suppose i write script alert one you can add up a list right this feature is not available in the free one you can add up a whole list like i tried with you javascript uh, alert one javascript colon alert one i tried with you i will add it okay so after this what i will do i will start the attack start the attack between two parameter this one let's start the attack right okay it required two parameter let's select sniper no problem select start attack as soon as you see there is status code 200 you see i injected two payload and it says status 200 that means it will it is working properly and if we see the response render right if you render it you can see the entire page over here and it will showcase you a pop-up if it is there right alert one is also working fine i can see the header response header that it is working fine there is no problem 200 okay and in this also i can see response 200 there is no problem that means I don't have to go to the browser, right? Everything I can analyze it over here only. Cool. So this is how we set up the proxy and we play up with the burp suit. Okay. So many things like this is like I played with one payload. You can do a brute force attack same way. You will find username and password over here. Come here, set the payload. Let's suppose I set another payload, right? I will set this payload also. Add. Now we have, I have two payload, payload one, payload two. You will see payload one and I will have payload two as well. I have to clear it again and do it again, right? So I will have two payloads over there. I can set two different kind of payload list over here. I can add from list. You can see this is A to Z. All the things are there. I can add short words. No problem. It will add short words over here. Inbuilt dictionary is there, A to Z. All the inbuilt dictionary is there, A to Z there is no problem over here right so this is how we play up with the burp suit proxy and it's a very proficient tool many of the uh, developers even in api testing api security testing we're going to use uh, these kind of stuff okay i'm opening the window for three minutes till six o'clock and after that uh, we're going to proceed with uh, WordPress pen testing and that will be end for the day today. You can ask me doubts for three minutes. Any doubt you have, please ask me. Hi, Kevin. There is no doubt, but uh, what is the cost of our professional version of Burp Suit? Sir, it depends. Like you take the enterprise one or you take the professional one. It will cost mm -hmm. you around single user license i think it will cost you 500 dollars some, somewhere 200 i guess yeah. i guess so it depends like it depends which along with which functionality you take two things are there enterprise and one more a uh, professional is there is there any open source 
we yeah, can get community one right you can get community one and you can have a crack one as well but that's illegal to you uh, sir i have one question regarding yeah, the crack yeah. bomb box suit so yeah, yeah. uh so the are crack box suits uh, suitable for use see man if you see the website right now right there is a thing called releases right box suit releases if you are able to match the hashes then the file is safe to use okay so no matter because there are many videos on youtube you can download and you can use this if you are able to match the hashes of that particular jar file okay okay then it is safe to use if it is safe it is it is same as that of what is this showcasing on this particular website releases right then it is safe to use otherwise it is not safe to use yes uh, so then yes, it is uh, working with cdn also yes please please go ahead sorry i interrupted you do these uh, crack uh, tools and softwares have spyware in them possibility is there that, the, that, that yeah, okay. i said man if, if if hash is matched right okay. if your intent okay. is maintained then it is okay to use no problem it is okay, okay to use i am not saying it is best practice and don't use the crack one right it said use the community one no problem only scanner is not there right rest every functionality yep. is there okay so got it. thank you mr rajni uh, ranjit ready yes it will work with cdn cloudflare any kind of site there is no problem okay guys uh, we going to do a little bit pen test over cms now right i hope uh, it will be great for us so just give me one moment i am just starting off my uh, machine right now all right here you go so we have this thing with us so if we talk about this wordpress right so wordpress i would say whenever you talk about this uh, wordpress thing so wordpress almost 36% of the websites are uh, running on wordpress right very much popular for bloggers or for personal any kind of management you want to do it's an open source and very beautiful uh, design it makes on the other side it can be a vulnerable thing as well any kind of cms if it is not updated we have multiple cmss like drupal we have zoomla we have uh, magento we have wordpress so today we're going to talk about uh, cms called wordpress right so if you look at the default what i did is i downloaded this uh, particular uh, wordpress file right and uh, the wordpress folder looks something like this right so we have a very important important files over over here as you can see we have something called wp config sample.php if we look at this file once we have this file we can have the username and password of my sql database okay so that means we can have a good amount of information from here we have wp content we have wp admin where you can see we can reach it to admin.php as well that means we can have a login page right we can brute force we have wp content where all the default themes and plugins are there default themes and plugins are there by default okay so if these kind of directories are open we can look for something interesting stuff with us okay so what we have uh, right now i have a machine which is over here right it is called wordpress pen test and we have an ip for it so uh, i'm going to demonstrate you that uh, how we going to play with this uh, wordpress right 
So there is a very uh, simple tool which is out there in the market, which is known as uh, WP Scan, right? So we'll be using that. Before that, by the time, let's try to open this uh, website, the IP over here, and let's see what we can do with this. 0 0.21, let's suppose I open. Trying to open just a moment. I think proxy has been completed. Mm, need to check. Let me. Uh, yeah, it is working fine. No issues. My proxy is okay. I believe so. I removed it. Yeah, it was removed. No issues. Thank you. Right. So site is something looking like this abrupt right now. And if you look at this, uh, there are certain things called home blog something. I open this and it says armor infosec test something and it is redirecting to somewhere else. Anyone else know what is this kind of issue? Anyone knows what is this kind of issue? Why it is happening? Why the site is not able to open? Even if I click anywhere, like I think 192.168, that will be working fine. If I click on home also, home also you can say it is redirecting to somewhere. And it is written armor infosec dot test something. Right? That means the domain name resolution is not yet done properly, right? Even, even if you see over here, I will open in uh, Parrot OS as well. Let's see the result over here. At what is the result? So this one, if I open 192.168.0.21, Right, I will tell you that where and how we did the change over here. Cool. See, the, here the website look is entirely different. Entirely different. Reason being, I can click on blog, it will open the blog for me. There is no issues. No problem at all. Right. So, what we're going to do is, it's working fine over here. So, if I switch it to super user and I go to nano, I go to etc host file. There is a file called etc host file. Right, as you can see up over here, that what I did is I did an entry over here. That means whatever you call, you call 192.168.0.21 or you're gonna call this particular uh, address, it's gonna have a resolution, perfect resolution. Right, that is why it is working fine over here. This is the only thing that I made a change. Right. Now what we're going to do here now, now we're going to play with a certain kind of nmap scans. Right. Certain little bit kind of nmap scans we're going to play. So let's switch it to workshop folder. Right. And we can see certain files over there. All right. So let's play with the first scan, which is nmap hyphen v hyphen p hyphen hyphen capital S S. And we're going to talk about the IP. Cool. Also, also, we can now try with something known as Nikto. Nikto is a web server vulnerability scanner. And I'm adding like this. Nikto hyphen h, the IP. Okay, it's gonna run. I want to keep it running. I will not fix it. I will not change it. And I will run one more tool called WhatWeb that is for website banner grabbing. And this I am running over here. 
it gonna give you the result very quickly so no need to wait much over here right it's gonna take time this is also going to take time it will give you the result quickly over here right so you can see we have apache 2.4 i'm holding the slide over here you can easily read out that what are the technologies we have we have wordpress version we have everything almost almost everything uh, we see up over here right then uh, we we can do a directory buster also on it right so let's do a directory buster http i am going to give this ip nikto i didn't give the http that was it was not working i will give it again right so it is started scanning the entire directories whatever present over here it will scan it right i will do nikto hyphen h again in front of you minus h http 0.21 okay that's gonna run like this you can see now it is running perfectly fine before we miss http or https no problem at all okay it's gonna find you certain kind of link right by the way nikto is one of the oldest web server vulnerability scanner it will take time it's slow but the result is good that's why it is proficient even today it is proficient right so it's gonna give you some files i will showcase you very little little files which it will give you 192.168.0.21 slash readme.html is also one of the important file in wordpress which generally developers and uh, doesn't remove even after installing it on the live site right so you can see we have couple of versions over here right we can see and we can enumerate something good from here right so we can find something like this as well right and nikto is nikto is all talking about this only all it is all talking about this only right directory buster is still running and uh, this one is 15 percent completed so we gonna attack on this now we're gonna just learn very simple tool which is known as wp scan very simple tool which is specially crafted for wordpress okay this one is the tool name right i will write wp scan minus h so that we all can see what is uh, there yeah mr anurag you give uh, anurag read right you give the correct answer right so first command which i am going to run in front of you is let's see the update whether this is updated or not hyphen hyphen update right so first of all we're going to update this it is updating the database and soon it will give you that it is updated only it is fully patched now let's see the result still looking for the urls it is also still scanning right update completed there is no problem so let's specify the URL wp scan hyphen hyphen URL and my URL is what my URL is nothing 192.168.0.21 so it's gonna run as you can see WordPress security scanner it's going to be running like this only throughout and uh, let's see what it gives to us uh let me stop the scanning it is working let me just stop the scanning right it's gonna work correctly let's try one more time wp scan hyphen hyphen url and let me give it over here only like this right by the time we can do certain simpler enumerations like we can try something called wp admin 
WP admin is one of the simplest thing where you can find out the user name and password, the login page, we call it, right? Connection has been time out. Yeah, we are able to reach it. Just a moment, right? I have to check it in my windows as well. All right, just give me a one quick short minute, one minute only. Oh, we lost machine. Yeah, you will all get the recordings. There is very uh, simple question to ask me anybody, anyone. Uh, I guess the IP got changed. Let me check it. Might be the THCP issue. No problem. We'll do an NMAP scan, right? It will give you us very easily. It will give you the IP, right? Don't worry about it. Twenty five is there, twenty six is there. Okay, let me check twenty five and twenty six as well. It got changed, I think so. Twenty six. Yep. So now it is listening on twenty six. Yes, so no issues. We can do it quickly again. That was DHCP, right? That happened because of DHCP, because the IP from the router got changed, right? So it is 26 now. That were, That is why it was not working, but no issues, right? These kind of small glitches always come. So when you talk about WP scan hyphen hyphen URL, you write 192.168.0.21, no issues, URL, right? So it's going to update the database and then it will be done. Uh, Mr. Anonymous, who is there, like give the social media link or the page or the channel, right? Okay, I'll uh, share with you uh, in the end. I will share with you. Just ask me once again, right? So as you can see, like this is 100% working over here. I want to showcase you certain commands. So it will be quick for us to go, right? When you talk about uh, themes and plugins to enumerate, we can write these commands like specify the URL and I'm writing enumerate VP or AP. VP means here it is written as vulnerable plugins. Okay. And AP means all plugins. Cool. 
Sometimes these two commands are not enough to get the plugin details. What we write, we write all plugins and we go in aggressive mode. So when you type out wp scan h, you're gonna use this command and it will be working totally fine and it will be giving you good details of the plugin. Similarly, similarly, we can find vulnerable themes. WT means vulnerable themes. Right, so we can have vulnerable themes also. We can have all themes also over here, no issues, right. And same way, same way, if you write the same command, I will just craft a new command in front of you, point number nine in time, right. I will write nine and you can say user, no problem. You can write all user, no problem, right. So this will be all users. It will go something like this so these things we can easily play have a look on the command and i will showcase you that how we can play with wordpress i will do it in front of you don't worry about that Right, so I believe this is clear to you. No worries about it. Right, so I will showcase you the result now. Our result has came over here. As you can read right now, that we can see some interesting IDs over here, entries over here. We have readme.xml, which I showed you. There is no theme WordPress version is being found. Nothing, nothing has been clearly seen over here. So let's try to enumerate the users in an aggressive mode and we can see whether the users we are able to see or not. So hyphen hyphen enumerate, I will write you, right? And uh, I will go in an aggressive mode, I can go, but I would not like to go. Let's see with you only, that what it, it's gonna give us. Even if it give me one username, I can try to brute force as well. IP26, no? IP26, correct. 26, correct, correct, thank you. Right, let it be running in two minutes. Within two minutes, it's gonna give you the answer. Don't worry about it. Okay, it says like by default it is again, I think it is again causing troubles but no issues, right, no issues. When you try for username, right, I will tell you it will showcase you one username called Bob, right, it is not giving the result right now. Let's try with admin and I will try you, tell you like how Bob is okay for us, right. Okay, it is working over here. So let's go ahead, accept the risk and uh, we can try to brute force the username for WordPress, right? You can see if I write admin, I'm writing any password over here. You can see any password I'm writing, login. It will give me an error that username and password are not correct. It will give me this error, right? You can see right now it is coming out unknown username, right? If I write Bob, if I write admin, let's suppose, Bob and admin, right? I'm writing. It's going to give me the password you enter for the username Bob is not correct. That means Bob is one of our users, right? Now what I'm going to do is I am going to brute force this particular user.
right let's go to uh, day two right and you can see that i have a wordpress password list over here so what command i want to issue is again see wordpress scan only it will do the magic for us so i can write like http let's write 192.168.0.26 and hyphen hyphen password i am going to specify this password and hyphen hyphen usernames i'm going to specify bob let's see okay there is some problem again okay let's see url i have to specify i think like this again causing issue let me check the syntax hyphen hyphen password oh, okay 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 it's gonna be full path i think so mm. some issue with the wordpress or i can write slash wordpress as well uh all right there is some problem with the server i think right now right otherwise no issues it will give you some password some password in the end it will give you and i will tell you the original password of the site what it will come uh just a moment it will be dot pw root 819 when you press that particular uh, command over there so let's suppose if i go over here and i write dot pw root 819 this is the password right after brute forcing that command is actually perfectly uh, right i guess the, the server is causing the issue right now otherwise that is uh, going to be 100% fine this one you can see passwords you give and user's name you give uh, bob right so this one is 100% it's going to be working fine let me try once again in front of you and let's check whether it is working or not so i will just give this ip without any kind of this stuff url just once last command which i am going to try and wp pass bob user name bobs and by the time i will showcase you this wp root 819 right i am logging with like with this hopefully this should log in right so by the time it is uh, coming up you can ask your doubts now right by that it will take some time to log in i know because of the server issues no issues now it is open i will try to give the social media link like the page or the channel where the recordings will be updated okay so by the way like you can easily find it out infosec on youtube right so just write like infosec train every webinar you can um, easily get it over here how to report how to generate report in burp suit right very nice question and important question as well very nice very nice i will showcase you right now right this is the page you can see and this is the burp suit pro right i'm going next For reports i will explain you don't worry at all there was one question regarding dust and dust i remember anybody has any question you can ask me up no issues right so reporting is very simple sir let's suppose uh, you 
put anything over here. Let me start my proxy again. Proxy, I'll start it again, right? Here is my burp suit and let's suppose come to this and it will come to the proxy. I think 8081, all right, no issues. 8081 and I give it to him again. So you can see I can put it to scanning. I put it to scan, no issues. Whatever comes up over here, right? You can select this, you can select all. Control A, right click, report selected items. Okay, report selected items, click on next. Next, and you can, whatever options you want to select, you can select, and you can select the file where you can select, I can select desktop, I'm writing it as workshop, and save, right, and, okay, save, next, it will be completed, right, and I will try to open for you this stuff, right, so you can see like this is my folder, okay? And I'm opening this thing in uh, Firefox. Let's open in Firefox. Right? So this is a beautiful box scanner report. I hope the doubt will be cleared. No, Mr. Sandeep, I don't know. <clears throat> There was a question regarding SAST and DAST, right? So static application security testing and dynamic application security testing. When you talk about SAST, you will be focusing upon source code reviews, tools like HP check marks that is going to be there in the race, right? Tools uh, like uh, you talk about um, Selenium, you can use in that case, right? So let's suppose we talk about this some tools I will showcase you. Open source and close source. Uh, which is over uh, here, I think. Here it is. Right, so Burp Suit, Burp Suit Pro, these things are like professional things. You can have free and professional as well. Zap is free, SQL Map is free, Nikto is free, Directory Buster free. OWASP Mantra, it is, if it is a browser, you can have multiple checks inside it, it's free. You have NetSparker, Acunetics, and Mises Professional. Mises, I told you yesterday also we discussed, Mises Home is free, Professional is not free. NetSparker, Acunetics, these are the scanner for web applications, right? HP, Checkmark, Selenium, these are actually used for source code auditing. When it comes to dynamic, right? That means you are changing up, uh, playing up with the applications at the API side, gateways. These kind of stuff happens in the dynamic testing. Okay, so when it comes to like source code, core source code review, auditing, then these kind of thing comes. So threat modeling, that is why like I told you uh, some tools regarding OWASP Dojo, OWASP Defect Dependency Checker, these kind of stuff comes into the picture. Okay. Anyone has uh, any doubt, you can ask me. I have no issues. Yeah, Karan, uh, this is regarding point number 10, HP check marks. So it okay. is HP tool or check marks another another entity? Because I can see it's another entity. Even I was reading something. Before, few days before, back. It, was, before it was HP check marks. That is why I added with HP. Now it is being like, I think it is clubbed with some other thing as well. Okay. But because originally, originally when it started, it was with uh, HP only. Yeah, it is a really fantastic tool because uh, yeah, it is very, 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 nice. very nice tool. Very and very it is nice. properly, it, it is used with properly with DevSecOps, uh, even pipeline. Correct. In fact, okay. Yeah, yeah, CI/CD pipelines. Correct, correct. They upgrade actually. They architecture they upgrade easily over there, easily. Yeah. So you talk about a lot of plugins. Get the lab and all the stuff, everything it will scan. Very, very nice stuff. Yeah. And in fact, it is called IEST, right? IEST, because yeah. we know SAST, we know DST, but IEST is in our concept, right? Uh, yeah, 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 correct, correct. Yeah. yeah, okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
any other any other question anyone want to ask i shared the handle with you right you can ask me no problem there is no problem with the time as well you can go 5 10 minutes more i have no issues so what did you teach in the yesterday seminar so we actually we discussed regarding pen test phases we discussed vulnerability assessment we did couple of uh, tools regarding vulnerability be it like nmap be it like nisus so in depth i told everybody regarding this so what are you planning to teach tomorrow sir so what's there for tomorrow tomorrow my tomorrow thing will be um, i will be going with same solution and i will be going with alien world osm okay 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 sir. right that that's my uh, agenda for tomorrow so do you plan to tell it about ibm curator even i am not not ibm curator it would be like very big to go ahead with that okay right. so uh, splunk will be there some use cases surely it will be there and alien world osim and usm anywhere uh, this surely i will discuss these things surely thank you sir yeah yeah uh, hi karan <laughs> sandeep once again yeah go ahead somebody is speaking go ahead yeah, no 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 uh this 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 three days course are you officially contacting like you know for the like kind of professional course or something uh we deliver yeah. right actually like in this kind of pandemic situation uh, everyone is doing so we are also conducting these kind of activities so surely like once in a month or once in a while we have this in case you want to join out some like professional studying course you can now visit the site infosectrain.com no actually uh, this one we are covering such a lot technology as well as the you know like yeah, yeah, it's an over yeah, over over uh, overview right yeah, yeah. so this will be you know like uh, this will be giving for more potential uh, additional you know the skill to the like uh, the for job searching people and uh, you know what the co- company is looking for it but uh, i already enquired in that infosec train but you are looking you you you, you will be giving training for focusing on only, only the specific course and technologies so i am looking for these kind of courses how you are you know teaching yesterday and today and tomorrow what is the plan the, this, which is the covering course is this kind of course if we have i am planning to you know okay uh, you want to have a broader overview course right that includes yes. al- almost everything right yes I mean, this, this this thing look interesting when it comes to knowledge right but when it comes to proven experience i would say go devote yourself in one direction first it's it look good right we are covering a lot of things like i i deliver and you are getting a lot of things 150 yes. 56 people 60 people sitting and we had a good interaction on all the both days right so as an whole it is good but if you are looking like you want to be a web pen tester no it's not good because i covered a lot of things might be it will helpful in some way might be it will help you in another way yesterday we covered pen test we covered entire thing we cover about nisus and map scan and all those stuff everything there right so yes. from future perspective one direction okay this kind of course you can say you can learn step by step right th there ecs say there lpt there then you become a good pen test your pen test point of view will be good it will be like this yeah that's true i'm currently working as a cloud security okay in the cloud security if you see you no know, like uh, if they will be looking for all the prospective knowledge ah, they yeah, are not yeah. for only for endpoint security or perimeter yeah, security yeah. or you know Because like you on prem right you are doing implementation so everything I need, to, i need to cover in the compliance point of view web application point of view like you know for yeah. perimeter level i need to like you know security you need broader have, like, multiple yes, domain knowledge yes i need to pitch into where are the security in the place so this kind of the profile if whatever you are covering this is really very 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 interest you know and as well as which is helpful for us like that is what i asked you yeah so yeah. i there is no course as of now but i think you can customize you can have a customized training and you can go something like this right and when okay. someone is recommending me to use foxy proxy as an extension you can use that sir there is no problem right how to find a website is access as vulnerable or not first of all like right now whatever i showed you today is like 
we directly jump in and we are trying right we have not enumerated we have not scanned the target it's it's not the goal over here okay so it's better to first of all do the proper va and then comes to pt it has to be there okay so that is why vulnerability assessment we always uh, see like that okay uh, are there any platform where we can uh, like uh, to be very frank the wordpress uh, host server i posted along with the video so you all can have go through it right it's called uh, vulnerable uh, wordpress server 1 it has been released recently last month that's why i took it but due to the dhcp configuration right now in my network it is getting up a new ip every time this is uh, one thing which you can practice exs er you can use for scanning like it is made one more is there xss strike is there you can use uh, uh, there is a person called uh, mr somdev he has created this xss strike that is used by bug bug hunters most of the time hack right? the box so also there hack the box also is also there yes correct and hack the box is like very uh, you need to learn good pen test mythology before going in right so build the mythology by vulnerable hub whatever you going to do and then you can switch it to this website hack the box that will be very nice very nice to learn the things Hello, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, sir, go ahead. So, do you recommend for uh, like to go for a information security degree, or is it better to pursue a certification or something like that? What is your end goal, sir? I cannot <coughs> say this. Like, we can, we should go. What is your end goal in the end? Like, what like, you want to achieve? Why degree is needed? I'm aiming for a CIS or Like some day maybe CTO, but okay, okay. Not busy pen testing. Not pen testing, right? More of compliance yeah, I mean, and management. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's better to have CISA, CISA. These kind of stuff is okay. This is okay. Okay, because I have a bachelor's degree in automobile engineering. Okay. So okay. I was complete profile change, right? Yeah, don't. Yeah, yeah. I would not say don't go for degree and all the stuff if you are especially talking about Indian market. If it is outside, yes, mm -hmm. I would recommend you do something in the masters, or maybe you do a PhD or something doctorate over here in cyber security. That would be good. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Thank you. Sir. No wishes. No wishes. what will be the path you recommend to become a security engineer having less than 1 year experience as a soc analyst very difficult question okay the path would be pentest for becoming a security engineer right so see you grab some knowledge uh, regarding network you grab some knowledge regarding web so some knowledge i would say not say like professional become a pro no if you become a pro then you will be having you will be called as a web pen tester or a network pen tester no it's a complete no so it's better like you grab multiple knowledge like one of you was saying like the css speak guy right css speak guy sorry cloud security so gather some knowledge and it will be good right security engineer generally uh, you will be solving the tickets only just like soc right getting some mails incident response mails and it will be good good to go as an analyst and engineer if you are talking about implementation stuff like you want to be good into technical implementation stuff then you need to learn more of ubuntu servers um, microsoft azure server now aws multiple servers you need to learn mr randeep right recordings will be there everybody do not worry about it i am sure they going to post it on social media and uh, i'll try to once i'll uh, wrap it everything uh, i will give you whatever presentation and supporting document we use during the training i will try to publish over my social media right my social handle i will try to do it over that anyone has any question regarding web 
you can ask me tomorrow's agenda will be plunk and alien world ocean okay what's the path for c risk certification c risk um, i would recommend you can go and learn sapsa togaf and then go for c risk sapsa first sapsa once you learn sapsa togaf will be easy for you and then go for c risk right so that path you can choose up anyone else any question you can ask me up no problem at all certifications like security plus cysa plus ccsp c was few on aws and all oracle will these help to move a stock analyst to yes mr ranjit ready for sure it will be available it will be good as in security engineer it will be good if you choose this path right but first do ch v10 then security plus then alongside cysa plus because cysa plus is not that easy at it, it look like it's not that easy but yeah the path is okay hi gun i have one question okay that is related to some <laughs> for example if you are recommend if you are referring someone for example for some other info sector in course i am in touch with prab nayar okay i okay, think he is right. doing more and more work on csp and ccsp okay. but if somebody you interested to get trained from info sector in and if you are referring that guy <laughs> So any any discount something else? Surely it will be there, sir. Surely you are now if you are a part of already InfoSec train. Surely you will be considered as like if like we can consider it as an upgrade, right? So it will be there. Don't worry. Okay. It will be there. Yes. Thanks. anybody else any questions you can ask me up no issues less than 2 years no it doesn't matter uh, mr ranjit it is like when it comes to security field right so it's like uh, if you have the knowledge you are the king for it any other question that is like i open the window for four more minutes now i would not take much of your time and uh, tomorrow's agenda we going to cover like splunk and osm okay another 4 minutes i open i already open up the window right thank you mr ranjit thanks all uh, where to learn about bug bounty again that same question ah uh, to be very frank like if you really want to learn in uh, web pen testing bug bounties if you were talking about or mobile application bug bounties first of all you can start it off with reading some good reports right hackers one ha hacker one has good reporting forum you can read it from there multiple people on medium peer list they post their write ups try to build the mythology from there you don't have to uh, i can say you don't have to leave even last inch of any application it is that right so it might be take like two days three days one week two week a month to find a bug one month one bug i can say that like it you cannot be that much fast if you are having a team that's okay if you are one it gonna take some time and again duplicates right 
so uh, you're gonna follow and it will be fine so no one like it's like there are multiple persons also out there in the market i would not take up the name but still it's it's you in the end it's always you okay so write-ups i would say start right reading the write-ups building the mythology then it will be all good okay IBM Q Radar Security Learning Academy. Okay, foundational course. Thank you, Mr. Anjit. Yeah, this one is also open. You can see, right? Anyone has any doubt, you can ask me up, no issues. One more minute, I'll keep the window open and then it will be all good. Thank you, Mr. Ritwik. Thank you all, by the way, for attending for day two. It was a little bit stretched. Thank you all uh, for staying with me during the session. I hope you like it, all the practical implementation we did, and it will be an add-on to your knowledge. Whosoever joined today also, you're welcomed for the next day as well right and uh, tomorrow it's going to be all same and uh, we're going to see some good logs some features and some implementation and how much way we can implement and deployment structure these things are in the coming up day okay thank you mr uh, Arunagiri, thank you, Mr. Ashik. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Apples. No issues. Thank you, Mr. Keshav. Thank you, Mr. Naman. Thank you all uh, for attending. Right. So I'll uh, wrap up for the day. Thank you, everybody, and I hope to see you tomorrow as well. All right. Take care. All right, everybody, uh, I'm just wrapping up now. Thank you for attending. Thank you.